<laughs> we have the D3 podcast in the building. <laughs> He's on fire. I need that. I love that soundboard. I love this soundboard. <laughs> it's, it's so, it's so now, what fire. if I told you I have three? Yeah, why, what's wrong with you, though? Three? Three? Yes. Three yeah, three. Man. I respect is, that. I respect no, that. that's nothing. To, that, they all make the same sound. He has the same sound. Who got more subs? Oh, Who got more okay. subs? Oh, my. Oh, here he go. Uh, here he go. Here he go. Here he go. Sage, Sage, Sage was the answer, but okay. Yeah, Sage is the answer. Uh, uh, um, <laughs> I guess, guys, how you doing today? Isaac, how you doing? Mojo, how you doing? Johnny, how you doing? Doing Sorry. great. Happy to be here. How y'all doing? We're, we're we're fantastic. Um, tell us a little bit about your story. You know, before we get into the ball takes, how'd y'all get together? How'd y'all get so much money? You know, chuckling. They chuckling now. Podcast. 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 Like, how'd y'all do it? Not Sage talking. Answer to that one. You can try. Oh my god! Stop. Stop this, bro. This is the nastiest agenda ever, bro. Stop. No. Uh, so, so y'all had YouTube shorts blow up for you, but like, we had YouTube shorts blow up for us for for us too, but like. <laughs> y'all blew up, blew up. You see what I'm saying? Like, like, it's it's, yeah, it's like a different y'all. type of like, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, what really happened? Like, tell me. Y'all, y'all got to contact the YouTube? I don't know. Contact People with the shorts, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just uh, a lot of pushing towards the full episode, a lot of pin comments, stuff at the end of the videos. We have like the thumbnail pop up, stuff like that. And just like making the long form video have like similar titles and stuff to what the shorts you would want to watch. And just, we just hope to pray it over time that go over. And thankfully they did. But, you know, it's, it's always like the, the thing of hoping they go over more and more from the shorts. It's kind of like the, are they ever going to stop coming over? Are the shorts views going to stop? So it's something we're always working on. Mm. Yeah. How'd y'all, how'd y'all find each other, for real? Me and Donovan have known each other since college. We've been friends since then. And we both uh, went to school together doing uh, sports journalism. So it was always kind of natural. Like, we tried to make a podcast before this. It's always kind of like been a thing we wanted to do. This is like the and... first iteration of like I <laughs> doing a podcast. We've done, it, like you for real, we've done it so many times. Yeah, What's asking third, for? So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then I met Isaac through my internship at House of Highlights during the summer of like 2022, and we were just like automatically homies within like the first two three weeks of us working together. And then he introduced me to Donovan and brought me onto their podcast, which was called Two Man Game, and they were just making short form content straight up. And then they invited me to make for short form content with them, and then. Donovan and I come chemistry, and then obviously our chemistry together works all it was fire. And then um, it's pretty much it from there. He's like, join. I'm like, bet. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we started being Donovan, did it for like a, probably like four weeks. And I thought I was like, I met Mo like two months ago. It's been cool. I feel like I, I saw some of his content before and like saw the energy he had. I was like, that'd be a perfect fit. We tried that for one week, and it was just, it was so clear right away that having him in the fold made the dynamic so much better than just me and Donovan. If it was me and Donovan, it would have been more of like a, like an old Stephen A. Smith, Skip Bayless type debate show where we're just like very different arguing each other, getting Donovan mad, adding Mo into the mix. He brought like the comedic tone, I think, and we took that and ran with it. Now, like, I think the defining part of our show is just being incredibly like unserious and very uh, pushing the boundaries jokes of what's appropriate for a show that's on a affiliated with a major company. Yeah. So Sound like yeah, Mo definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just I like niggas get off, the wave, bro. People do not want to hear Mr. Know It All Takes 24 7 anymore. I'm exactly. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm glad. And of we the still wave. have some of that for sure. I'm oh, glad yeah. of the wave of like uh, current NBA YouTubers like taking the game less seriously. Because I feel like mm-hmm. the, the conversation should be fun. Like uh, there, there was yeah. this movement like the last, I don't know, like three years of just super serious analytical advanced analytics conversation i'm glad there's like a counter movement of people saying yeah, yeah. man that there's a place for that there, there should be a space for that but there should also be a space for like let's just have fun talking about basketball so i'm for glad sure. y'all have embraced that as well yeah i, I feel like we try to like because i'm very much like the, the former with the like nerdy advanced analytics shit like that's my bag like before we started this i tried making those videos i just never was consistent enough with it for it to take off so like i try to like have our show be like the cross between those where there's still some substance and like you still will like learn something, but in a fun way in between jokes and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. I feel like blending those two things is what has like made people enjoy our stuff. Cause like one short, they'll see us debating like who's the greatest Laker of all time. And there'll be varying de- degrees of thought points on that. Mm-hmm. And then next time we're today, we drafted the biggest players of all time. And I'm talking about girth. Like it's, it goes all over the place. <laughs> Just reckless shit. <laughs> Just reckless shit. Yeah. How would and... y'all know? You know what? <laughs> 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 
It was Giannis, right? Yeah, the, yeah, the sweatpants. That. This is crazy. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. The something that we try to do to help, like, keep that balance is, of course, throughout the regular podcast, we try to talk real basketball. I just will bring out the X's and L's. Donovan will have his arguments, and I try to, like, be the balance between both of them while making dumbass jokes. And um, <laughs> that's, like, always, you know what I'm saying, important. You don't want to lean too hard to either side because, you know, like, the average reading level in America is fucking fifth grade. People <laughs> like to be entertained. People are naturally <laughs> dumb, like dumb jokes. Mm-hmm. But at the same yeah. time, some people like to walk away with some value at the end of the day. Yeah. And so we try to collide both worlds. Yeah, it's always hard. I feel like we've had weeks where we go like too far into the funny shit. And I look at our TikTok. I'm like, we look like some fucking fools. So there's too yeah. much roasting. <laughs> so I try, try to find the balance is always important. I do want to mm-hmm. ask um, Isaac and Donovan because y'all said you guys can't come from a sports journalistic background, like in college. Yeah. How do you yeah. feel like that has translated over to you guys' work, um, like on the podcast side of things? Like, what are some things that you guys learned unique that that are like unique to y'all having that background as opposed to not having that background? Mm. Um, I think, I think like part of it is is like media literacy and like when we like when we're looking at at stuff and like like you know on Twitter. NBA reports come out every single day. Rumors fly every day. And so some people may be talking about something, but we look at it and we're like, oh, so-and-so said that. That's not true at all. Like, you just have to know who's who's saying what. Or, like, you know, some people just talk and uh, trying to go for, like, hot takes. We're not necessarily trying to do that. Like, we want everything that we say is based in some sort of um, – truth or opinion or, or like something that actually has some substance behind it. Mm-hmm. And so I think it's just being a lot more intentional with the stuff that we say rather than just like, Oh, this is, this is popping up. This rumor, ha- this rumor popped up and we're just going to take it as truth. Like we don't, we don't, I don't think we do that at all. Yeah. I feel like we have a good balance of like, I don't know, just us being like older than our audience. I feel yeah. like we have like a sort of a responsibility to, not professional is not the word, but keep it like substantive and not full on just saying bullshit. You know what I mean? And I think that com- it comes from that of us coming from a more traditional background and like also knowing that like we have to weave in some of the more entertaining stuff, but like keep that foundation of substance that so because like you know there's always going to be like kids that want to watch that, but if you're building like long term a show, there has to be that foundation of like something worth listening to, mm-hmm. and you know people will have the expectation that you're not going to just like say nonsense. So we're, we're always very keeping an important eye on that. Yeah. Also, at the same time, like, we know not to, like, lie on somebody's name just for clicks. Like, <laughs> like somebody, yeah. somebody's, you know, somebody can easily come back and, like, sue you if you're just spewing lies about something. So, like, we know, okay, like, we can't, like, we actually have to be, like, serious and stuff. And, like, even even recently, you know, and I, like we are not going to get into all of this, but like with the Josh Giddy stuff, like a whole bunch of people were like commenting, like, "Oh, what are you guys going to say about Josh Giddy?" Da da da. And we like said on the pod, like it's an ongoing investigation, like this is something that's like serious. And so I think like being able to have that like discerning attitude towards a lot of the news, like we're able to to do that, and it comes a little bit natural to us because of that background. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, we're also bad at it sometimes because sometimes we have a bad habit that we try to get over time <laughs> of like punching down and making jokes in a way that's like that we shouldn't be like making fun of ben simmons too much shit like that you know like yeah. the easy jokes no. so trying to like yeah yeah there's nothing wrong to an extent but so we, we, exactly <laughs> we take those fucking layups way too much i think <laughs> so like trying to like not take as many layups and like do it in a tasteful way is always something we're trying to get better at yeah wait so so because you know sometimes i'm on twitter sometimes uh and i see <laughs> these these reports fly across my screen who are some of these names that i shouldn't be listening to like i should just be blocking mm. maybe I think it's like it's the opposite. I think you should just block them all unless it's a name you know, unless it's a Woj, a Shams, a Windhorse, whoever. Like, you see a lot of like local beat reporters just be talking on their own podcast to get clicks. So like the ran the athletic writer for the Portland Trailblazers, whoever I, I don't know who that is, I pulled out of my ass. So maybe he's cool. <laughs> Something like that. Well, they'll just be like, I hear the team is interested in Lowry Markkinen, and now people are talking about like, oh, the Trailblazers have this trade package for Lowry, but he's just fucking spitballing on a show, and these. The real problem is, is aggregate Twitter accounts like NBA Central and shit. Just post anything that they can mm-hmm. get their hands on mm-hmm. and people run with that for days. But you know what's funny? If you go to like parks or barbershops or, you know, wherever, the gym or whatever else, that's literally the way that people have conversations about basketball. It's yeah. like, yo, I heard 
Atlanta has this package for DeJounte Murray, and they'll end up with Paul George, uh, uh, Chris Middleton, and the next three first-round picks from the Charlotte Hornets. Would you oh, do that? Shante? Yeah, would you, would, you, would, you, would you do that? That'd be the fucked up part. <laughs> fuck, fuck my ad lib. That'd be the first part. They'd be like, would you do that? Would you do that, though? Would you? Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I, I, I don't know. Maybe. I, I, yeah, yes, I, I can't say. I don't know. <laughs> probably. That'd be I'd Lakers probably fans trying to dangle the shitty role players for every star in the country. Oh, <laughs> oh, a guilty as charged. I am a part of the problem. Uh, Miles Turner's in every damn trade for the past five years. <laughs> THT? I'm not gonna forget about THT. Oh my gosh! I was THT in a in a pick. I was. Oh my god! That was D'Lo. That was D'Lo. Kind of nice. Yeah. We passed up on Kyle Lowry when he was still good for fucking THT. Oh, oh! Please don't get me started because there's a certain guy over there that still thinks THT was the right move. I was, I was, I was also like, we should, you know, like I had, I saw some hope. I thought they should trade for Kyle Lowry, though. I didn't see that much hope. <laughs> that was great. Yeah. I think that one season he would have been helpful. The other two don't matter because now they're going to be there. So, you know what it is. Nah. He <laughs> is the same player, boy. I tell you what. I just <laughs> look yeah, bro. Yes. Not, not a lick better, bro. Man, not what does that better. look like? 10. Uh, <laughs> Balder now. 10 4. He's bald oh. defense. Yeah, he is. Right. 10 Damn. 4 on There's 40% cooked. from the field. <laughs> the like, you know what I'm saying? He is just, uh, he's a, he's a guy. He looks like he's 80. <laughs> nah, he, he's a normal dude. I mean, it is what yeah. it is. Okay. Dama, so y'all get together. Uh, oh. Okay, Dama, looking back, would you still do the trade? No, I'm telling you, no. Vincent, no. There's no reason to do that trade. It looks, especially seeing how that season went. AD's, getting thickums doesn't change AD and LeBron getting hurt. Nothing changes <sighs> about that. If anything, it just adds a <laughs> shitty contract on top of a lot of dumpster fire. You're just throwing yeah, well, your mind. Even Ron weren't hurt yet when the trade would have went down. You can't Damn, look at him, bro. <laughs> but, okay, so getting Kyle Lowry, you feel like that would, in the playoffs, AD doesn't get hurt now because we have Kyle Lowry? Because I would say no. I still think AD gets hurt in the playoffs. You already know. Yeah, I mean, you, 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 actually, you, you asked the wrong person. <laughs> I mean, I'm talking in hindsight. At the time, I'm like, I don't trust Kyle Lowry. Thickums is not something I'm trusting. But now in <laughs> hindsight, looking back, I'm definitely saying no. Yeah, I love man. slipping thickums into it every time. Yeah. Oh yeah, you gotta normalize it. When you say it normally, yeah. it's just like in the whole conversation, like, people don't look at it as weird. You know, yeah, they, roll off the everyone gets well. to it. Everyone's like, yeah, yeah, we know thickums is. Thickums, yeah. You know, yeah, now we're all saying thickums. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just saying, bro. I've, I've always said this to you, Dom. We keep saying it. Ad love his nurse. You keep calling the man thickums. He would have been fine, bro. I'm just saying he would have been perfectly fine with Kyle out there. A, a caboose could have cushioned the fall. You don't know. You don't know what could have happened, bro. You don't know what could have happened, bro. No, y'all should have. No, y'all should have probably did it. Okay, we, we definitely should have. I don't know how this. is I'm looking at it. Uh, but know. THT, we 100 percent should. Have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. THT, we just sort of held on until the next year. All right, bro. That 10 points was vital. All right, so y'all y'all started up. The podcast is going. Things are rocking. Um, we know how shorts work. Don't play, don't play with me with this this question, this answer. What's the most amount of subs that y'all got in one month? Uh, I think the end of last season, that's when we had our craziest month. I think it was like 45k or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in a month, yeah. Okay. 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 yeah lot, run the finals what? last year. The shorts views were insane. Yeah. <laughs> it was crazy. We were in like a mill every short. That was ridiculous. Then the summer came, and that shit plummeted when the NBA was gone. <laughs> yeah, we were on, we were door dashing and shit. It was crazy. <laughs> I was like, are we cooked? Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> how, often, how often did y'all upload that month? Every day. Just once a day? $30 million. Yeah, yeah. Oh, hell no. Nah. Yeah, it wasn't once a day. <laughs> that million dollar million views shorts? What Let's the see. hell? Uh, it was 44K in June. Yeah. Okay. Which grand, we're like 25k a month now, so that that's unsustainable. It was nothing crazy. It's not that crazy, but that was that was definitely the peak run finals time. I'll just come little 25k a month. <laughs> we, we, ain't got 30, we ain't even got 30 million views. Show. They did 30 in a month. What the, oh man. Okay, okay. Um, during during that boom though, did y'all see um a one to one? Not not one to one, but like some sort of translation between the shorts boom and like the long form podcast that y'all have. It's always, I think it's always been proportional. Yeah, it's always been like uh, subscribers typically equate to it. Like as it's grown, they've both kind of grown over time. Because mm-hmm. like I think at that point we were probably getting like 30k views an episode. Yeah. And yeah. now I think our baseline is like 75k. Most more often it's like 90 to 100. 
So I don't know exactly if it's been the same ratio, but they've both been steady moving. Mm-hmm. That's what the thing I worry about is like when the shorts algorithm inevitably drops us, are they going to keep moving? We'll see. Yeah. yeah, I ain't gonna lie. That's actually higher than I thought on some non troll shit because shorts algo sometimes it just doesn't translate, at mm-hmm. least for, for my experience. So damn, you said for sure. 30 to 45? Damn. I think, but yeah. I think it's easier to translate when it's a show because I think it's a, yeah. the, the whole translation is about like, is it the same audience? And I feel like more often if somebody's watching a podcast clip on shorts, they probably like podcasts, so they'll watch shorts. If it's something like different, like a personal channel where it's not a show, so maybe somebody only likes shorts, they don't like video essays, maybe it'll be a less of a translation. That's but I think podcasting is like the easiest one to do that for. That's what they told y'all at House of Highlights? That's that's the sauce right there? I'm about to say <laughs> that. I look, we've talked about this shit. That's the first time I've heard it in a way. Oh, that's the sauce right there. The Hold on now. Yeah. 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 I'm not lying. I don't yeah, got the really right here. Yeah. Um, okay, so things are booming. You know, plaques are coming in. You got to go to the dentist soon because it's just going to be too much plaque. But um, <laughs> I, I don't think it was just a mystery knock on the door, but the House of Highlights connection, how did that happen? Um, uh, yeah, I, I've been working there for two years since I graduated college. I, I've been in, until like last month, I was an employee there. So it was always kind of a thing that I'm sure they had their eye on the show, considering I was an employee there, part of the team, and I was doing my own thing. So like, once what happened was basically we got off from another company and I was like, yeah, I'm going to quit my job and go do this because they want to give us a deal that makes sense for me to do this full time. And they were like, hold on, let's see if we can do something together. And it just materialized. So it was really just lucky that I happened to have a job there at a company that does podcasting stuff. And it just happened to be like the perfect situation for me to make that happen. So you never went upstairs and was like, hey, <laughs> I do this thing <laughs> just to let y'all know. I yeah, I like I like breadcrumbs, you know. It was it wasn't new, it wasn't news to them, but I never like yeah. pitched them or anything like that. I wanted to see if they were interested first. Yeah, it was pretty much just a humongous elephant in the room. Yeah, Thanks, even man. at my time when I was there, it was just a huge elephant in the room and everyone was just like swaying around to see if anything would happen. And we were just mainly focused on figuring out how to improve the show each every day um as time went on and yeah. it just came to the door. It was a slightly weird dynamic at times because like I said, I'm an employee there. I was a content strategist and like it's my job day to day to like work on their channels. So I'm sure there was like some questions across the company. They're like, oh, was he only working on his channels? Is he working on growing these? So it was a little weird at times, but eventually it worked out where the show got big enough that something had to happen. I think you're one of, at least that I know, like one of the few content strategists who also has a platform. Because a lot of those that work on like social media consultations and console sh- content strategists and things of that nature, they usually, oh, you don't have to have a platform to do this. And not saying they're not true, like no, not towards them, but yeah. at least you put the, you know, you put the work in. I like that. Man. I do like that. I, like I, appreciate that. I think you're better than me because I would have, I'd have been straight up with them. You're right. I am working harder on my stuff. <laughs> I, I, I'm giving you the obligated hours right now, and my free time is my free time. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have looked at right in their face. Hey man, please report about the sign because I've been putting in work. What are you gonna do? Like, day one. Yeah, I think that was kind of the yeah. that's definitely what they thought I was doing for sure. That was like the unsaid vibe. <laughs> yeah. What's the uh what's the future look like in person? What's the what, let me ask y'all this. This this you know, we might start a fight here tonight. No, okay. why aren't y'all in person? Because at one point in time y'all were in person, I'm assuming, right? No, like, we, we, were, we, were, the internship. we were never in person. We've done one in-person show and that was for our 50th um, episode. And um, so we all went out to, to LA and we recorded there. But I mean, when, when we started it, Isaac was still in Austin. And um, yeah, Austin, I, Isaac was in Austin. I was in Houston whenever we started it. And then even whenever we brought Mo in, Mo was in Atlanta. So it just has never been a time where like all of us are in the same city yeah but that's have y'all had those that... conversations yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Right. well let's get it's to the meat a, potatoes it's just a matter of a who different... is pro uh, and against <laughs> moving into them Nah, I'm good where I'm at. Who, who's that guy? Who's let, that guy? Let, let, let's break the ice though, just not to put the pressure on y'all. For the last like year and a half, no, 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 no. I don't, don't want them. Nothing. I don't want to feel like they in the hot seat. For the last year and a half, we have been having that exact same conversation. And I will say, there, there's one super pro. There's <laughs> one 
of us who was just like on the fence, like, hey, man, I'm with it, I'm not. And there's two, like, man, I don't travel like that, I, and I'm comfortable <laughs> where I'm at. So we're having it a turmoil as it is and seeing how y'all do y'all show similar to ours all on yeah. the internet. Yeah. Is there I, a situation where I'll like say, two y'all pro, some y'all against, I'll say this. I'll say don't this. really care? Isaac is 100% the most like pro. <laughs> let's like, listen, let's move to the same city. We can have a big house, right? The house will be our compound. Like Isaac is very much on that um, end of, of the spectrum. Um, I personally, like, and we've talked about it, like, I think I'm on kind of, you know, closer towards the other side of the spectrum. Um, <laughs> I think Mo's like, I, I think Mo is closer to, to Isaac, but he definitely like is closer like to the middle though. And so it's kind yeah. of like one, two, three. Yeah. Like I think for we the don't most want part, to and no we should. It's just like a matter of life timelines between like relationships, getting out of school, doing all this stuff. That's like, it's hard to find the time to, but like I appreciate it from day one. Like you don't understand if we don't go in person one day, the show is not going to be what it can be. Like, it's so vital for the ceiling of the show to be in person. So I think we all know that, that it has to happen eventually. It's just like a, when does it make sense for everybody's life situations? Here we go! <laughs> <laughs> well, no, 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 I mean, listen, we're not, we're not let's saying anything on. here. We're not saying anything here that we haven't told each other. So like, this, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this oh, oh, oh. Yeah, about this last week. Mo, Mojo, how do you feel? Mojo, how do you feel? Just, you know. No, like, I'm in the middle. Like, I go through, so like, literally, during the summer, I moved to New York because I'm like, okay, I have an opportunity. I could either move to X location that we, we talked about for a hot second. Donovan's not feeling it. I just, I just all the way down, and I'm like, I want to do it because I know the potential and the ceiling of it. But at the same time, there's some like real life other, other things that just aren't taken into account. Yeah, when you're talking about like a whole career shift, you know. And so I tried my best to do like meet. I tried my best to be half and half. And so I have a plan in the back of my head. Okay. Like if my girl graduates school or a year from now, she's going to be able to travel and do her work <laughs> anywhere. I you know what I'm saying? That. So I'm like, okay, bet. <laughs> Initially, like a couple, a couple months ago, I was like, yo, I said some shit like, I don't know, 2028 or 2029 or something like that. Hey, we yo. do it in person. Uh, and then I'm like, yeah. then, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, okay. We, gonna be he does it all the time. Every time I talk We're about it, he's be, like, listen, 2026. I'm like, stop fucking talking about 2026. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Isaac That's is not a real year. Real. <laughs> exactly. There are some clones on D3 and, and right Mojo now. And Mojo had a similar answer. It was just more so of a money answer instead of a timeline answer. And Omar was like, man, you're not serious for real. Let's, let's there are some on. clones, man. <laughs> can so, so, wait, can I ask, Isaac, is there situations that arise where you guys are discussing strategy, discussing topics, whatever, and you just sprinkle in like, hey, man, I ain't gonna lie. We wouldn't be dealing with this if we we're all in person. Like I just all the time, every time. I make sure okay, every, so every yeah. time. Uh, every time. Clone. Yeah, that's a shout out clone. Clone. That's a shout out clone. Yeah, that's a shout out clone. Yeah, that's, so, that's so, so that, I'm, I'm not shy about it. I try not to be like annoying and naggy about it, but no, you I'm should. Very, very vocal about like long term. It has to happen. Like I don't want to. Don't, don't forget because it's working remote now. It won't always. And once things slow down, you gotta have that foundation of being in person and like doing it as best as you can. So when it does slow down, you're still good. Yeah, exactly. So, so what's a uh, what, Mojo? You you have a girlfriend. It, or the other, the the either of y'all in a relationship too? Isaac yeah, Gunner. I have a girlfriend that I live with right now. Yeah, and I'm I'm engaged right now. Damn. Okay, y'all got commitments. Okay, okay. that's that's me the too. aversion. Me too. By the way, that's the yeah, aversion. You see okay. Congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I see. And that's what's hard. It's a it's a six person decision, not just a three. So like, right, there has to be right. a lot of stuff involved. Well, let me. Well, let I'm me. Glad let you me get it. I'm glad you get it, man. Appreciate let it. Me, <laughs> let me. Let me. Let me help Mojo out real quick. Let me help Mojo out. I got a follow up after this. Cause, cause really, you know. Moving, moving close in proximity, not necessarily in a house. I think, I think a content house is a terrible idea. Oh yeah, you know? yeah, we're not doing that. I think a singular house is a bad idea. Moving in close proximity is great. So then, what's the city in the discussion that seems to make the most okay, sense? So See yeah. now, that is where <laughs> things are like. <laughs> Listen, I'm like Isaac, <laughs> Isaac has been pushing yeah. when we when, like the first time we very like we started talking about doing stuff in person. The two cities that we were talking about the most were like New York. And LA, and I personally, I I hate Los Angeles. I'm not a fan of, of the city. I I I can't stand it. Um, they don't want to be happy. It's crazy. <laughs> I just I don't I don't like it. I, every time I go to to Los Angeles, it's just I like you get off the plane and it's weird vibes, man. It just feels the energy is just weird out there. I, I like New York's vibe like better. It. I don't know. It's like too laid back in LA. I don't know. I don't. 
I don't I don't like it. And like I like my dad is, is from New York and so I grew up going there a lot and so I'm I'm much more comfortable going like in New York. But and as a kid and even yeah. throughout college, like I wanted to go to like New York and maybe like move there. But I think that like now it's just like this just doesn't make sense. Like it's just too expensive and you don't get enough bang for your dollar. Man, how does everybody got a mm. whole different opinion? <laughs> this is great. Like, I would, like, like the more the more this conversation goes, the more y'all gonna be in on some of the inside jokes. That's why we're like holding back glass right now. Um, now that I'm thinking about it, though, I'm just saying based on where we're located, man. A, a new, I mean, Damo, a part time Yorker. <laughs> where, where's everybody at for, for you guys? Where's everybody at? I'm in the I'm in damn near the heart of the DMV right now. I'm like not too far from DC. Okay. Um, I'm in North Carolina. I'm in Boston. And then, and then the, the, the only the only right answer to even y'all's dilemma, Atlanta. I'm in Atlanta. <laughs> we would fun. never go to Atlanta. We <laughs> 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 would never go to Atlanta. <laughs> so tell me this tell me this tell me this <laughs> what is what is the benefit of la new york like you talking about hierarchies of the, the states mm-hmm. or the cities the la new york over atlanta make that make sense well, well, every option. Option. yeah you got it new york uh we have we were the house of highlights offices are so we had those resources there that'd be one thing is like we wouldn't have to build our own studio. We could probably get them to do it in their office in their studio space. So like part of the production and budget would be out of our hands. That'd be cool if that ever became a thing. LA, I'm here now. It's where the most creators live to collaborate with, where, you know, the whole like the industry is out here type shit. And I just live here. So like I, I moved here right when we started talking about it. And I was the first one that like moved out. It was before Mo moved to New York. So it was like, let's all come here. I just got here. It's LA. Like, why wouldn't you want to be in LA for something like this? But, you know, I understand the price thing. And then we thought of other cities like me and Donovan are from Texas. So we talked about like going back to Texas because, you know, it's the cheapest place to be. We can get the most bang for our buck. It's a, it's a pretty neutral place. Nobody hates being there. But Donovan wants to move because he's been in Texas his whole life, understandably. Yeah, I'm done. I'm done with Texas. And then Donovan and Mo good. are both East Coast bound for them and their relationships, places where they're going to be after school. So I'm like, oh, maybe we'll find the East Coast city. Like, you know, there's just like a lot of factors that makes it all complicated. Wait, Donovan, you're in Texas right now. But yeah, I'm in. Wanna... I'm in Houston. Oh, that's I'm, interesting. I'm in Houston. Yeah, and so. But like, you want to move? Yeah, oh. and so like I'm, you know, so like my wedding is next July, and so like I'm gonna be here for probably like another like year, year and a half, just after after, you know, get, getting to the wedding, getting everything like set up afterwards. But I mean, I you know my fiance and I we've already had conversations with, like both of us we've been in Texas our whole lives and so we want to go out and you know just live in a different city. Um, actually, Boston's one of the cities that like we both like for real um, as like a, a place to to move. And so it's like <laughs> we, like we just had great conversations. city we, man, great city. I actually I I just went out there at the start of November. I really liked it. I was I was rocking with it. Um, I don't got no business in Boston. <laughs> Yeah, I ain't going, it's kind of cool. It's cool. There, bro. It's kind of cool. <laughs> but yeah, I, but yeah. So like, that's what it is. It's cold. You're yeah, it's summer. Be so. There's a winter though. You know that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, one of the four seasons. Come on, bro. Stop it. If we move to a continent house, I am mandating w- warmish Warm weather. Winter. Yeah, that's not, no. Yeah, come bro. on, bro. No shot. Yeah. Wait, Content so, called us at. Content called us. So, so what? What creators in LA are like so worthy of noting? None. No, yeah, there's none. Okay. Not in our no. space. I just, you know, you know, like that's, you know, you know what I mean. Like, there's none in it's our space home. technically. It's your home. It's your. I get it. Yeah, I and like, get, and you no, know, we're basketball pod. If you want to get athletes on the pod. Being in a big city is by far the easiest place to do it. So that's one thing. Like, you know, the pe- people that whether it's athletes, if you want to get like I don't know comedians that are into the NBA stuff like that, you, being in LA or New York makes it way easier. So, so House of Highlights is under Turner, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. WBD now. Yeah. Yeah, that that's headquartered out of Atlanta. One of them, yeah, yeah. And but the House yeah, of Highlights team is New York based. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's just you know, I mean, still, you know, it's in the it's in the family. It's in the family. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is how he is. I'm not pitching. 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 i <laughs> oh, wait, so we're trying to go Texas is crazy. People, people, people vacation in Atlanta. The athletes love Atlanta. Yeah, I just. I, Can I ask why is Atlanta a hard no for y'all? 
Yeah. <laughs> That's Donovan. I don't even know. <laughs> yeah, Donovan's never been to Atlanta, have you? That's not. That's listen. I lived there very briefly when I was little, um, and really? I've been I've right. been back a, a couple times. But like, one, Atlanta in terms of like socioeconomics, one, it's like a bad. It's not like a great city. It's one of the like in terms of like pay gap and all that type of stuff like it's bad it's like oh we're getting like, deep it's it's <laughs> it's, yeah, it's bad it's bad there the way that it's like actually mm-hmm. set up it's fairly like segregated um fairly i don't true. think if we, if we want to just do like <laughs> regular stuff in terms of just like food and food, in terms of just like food and culture um mm-hmm. everybody who goes to atlanta right everybody comes back and is like Yo, like Atlanta has just like terrible customer service. Like I don't think I I don't know. Oh, Keith Levi's yeah, on the Keith. Yeah, 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 like, 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 no, because I, I really want to hear him. I really want to hear him out because this is just misconceptions I mean, of like tourism. We've never discussed Atlanta. I, I, like, I, I, I can understand that, but I do want to hear this out. Yeah, and so like the the to that and just like the general vibes that I get from Atlanta is like I don't think that it would be a viable i don't think it would be worth us moving there in Mm -hmm. terms of one like creators being out there or actual like listen if we are going to be on inside the nba then like cool like having shaq and ernie in there is is cool we're not hanging out with them every day so like that that isn't necessarily like the biggest priority for us hey donovan chat saying it's too black for you that's what everyone's saying that's crazy (laughs) okay (laughs) <laughs> I, I think it's it. okay. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. Listen to him break down Atlanta and thinking about our last two trips to Atlanta. I think he perfectly summarized what I actually <laughs> felt about going to Atlanta. That was like a bow on like everything. That, da- hey, Damo, Damo is the biggest Terrible. cap artist ever. He's never brought up socioeconomic <laughs> things in the world. <laughs> hey, I didn't even think about the pay that, game, but that, it makes there, sense. That, like, yeah, the the awesome. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Why? We went to the, we went to the even, Piggly Wiggly, and I was like, yeah, this is even, specifically, even, this is not, <laughs> not what it's supposed to be. Hey, <laughs> that's true. I, when we went to Piggly Wiggly, I did say 100% fact. Hey, this is too niggish for me. I will say. <laughs> I don't. Okay, tell me, like, tell, tell me on that so some some me on Atlanta because even Mo Mo was there for for a while and Mo was like he was ready to to get out but like I don't I don't remember ever hearing from Mo like shining reviews of Atlanta. No, I mean, I mean he lives like, here, so it's, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, no, I was not born there, but I was raised there for twenty years of my life, and so I like Atlanta personally. I'm from there. I'm comfortable around people who look like me of course and so <laughs> i'm just like <laughs> well okay like, listen you can't say, you can't say that because you saying that pushes this other agenda <laughs> I, know, I, know, I know i know i know i'm not trying to do that <laughs> donovan's half honduran by the way i okay let's let's get it right it's not, it's not honduran. i am i am i'm uh, salvadorian but no yeah atlanta's cool for me i i know it i know like you know what i'm saying Industry wise, I think sometimes I would probably underrate it a little bit, but I've never went to go to bat for Atlanta. This is where sh- everybody should be at. Because even me myself, I felt what Donovan felt, which is why I never pushed it. I kind of want to go out a little bit and explore somewhere else. Even though I, I think it's a cool location, but I'm just like, I'm so like in the middle with it. I could, I could understand, I could understand why Mojo wouldn't push it for the same reasons why you wouldn't push you know, being from where you're from and to advocate like, yo, let's come, let's come here. I, I've lived here my whole life. I want to move out, et cetera, et cetera. That's perfectly fine. The socioeconomic gap, I get it. There, the, the disparity between, specifically in like Fulton County, the, the wages from like essentially whites and blacks is very, very high. That's irrelevant to you. You make a lot of money. Let's <laughs> right. Like, let's, you know what I'm saying? You make a lot, like, that's not, that's irrelevant to you. Also, you wouldn't, live in the air. <laughs> you wouldn't, you wouldn't live in Fulton County anyway. Like you would not live in downtown Atlanta. Nobody would tell you to live in downtown Atlanta. Just like nobody would tell you to live in downtown. Like if you move to Boston, I'm pretty sure nobody would tell you, hey, move smack downtown in Boston. That doesn't make a lot of sense. Now, if that's what you want to do though. I was like, how you know what him and his woman talked about? Maybe they want to be right in the bitty for real, man. What are you talking about? I don't I wouldn't tell him no. Would you would you want to be downtown Boston for real? Um next to the TD Garden. Not well no, that's that's up north, isn't it? I, I think it's, I don't know shit. But I mean, <laughs> is it is it north station? I think the yeah, the uh the neighborhoods that we saw, I mean, we were 
Cause our, so whenever we went, our hotel was in downtown and it was like right there. And I mean, like the Boston Commons were cool. Newberry Street wasn't that far away from it, like Back Bay and all those, all those like um, even like that wasn't that far. Fenway was kind of was kind of cool. But like that's what more more like west of the city. Like there's yeah. there's there's places even around like downtown Boston where it's like hey yo what's what's going on yeah yeah I see, I see that. yeah keep <laughs> that but, but, yeah, but yeah so like but there's places around downtown Boston that like wouldn't be bad but like even I, I don't know I I, under, I understand what you're saying in terms of like it wouldn't be like adjacent to us but I'm just saying like if you are I I, I do think that there gets a point in every city where when you have stuff like that it starts like you can like feel it like the it starts like infiltrating kind of just like the city's culture and stuff like that so i like moving to moving to that and knowing kind of just like the overall vibe of that land i do think it would contribute a little bit to like but how i would feel being there there's I, and again there's no way to me that you can say that and new york is in the ta- on the table I, I mean i understand that it has the the headquarters so that's fine yeah. but new york super over gentrified new york is on the table 100%. and then los angeles is, is in the it, same it, it, yes it was no 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 no. i'm saying like new york like was on on the table and like it like not on the table that's what I'm saying. Oh, okay it's so it's not a, okay that's that's perfectly fine yeah. but what, what what i'm essentially saying is that no matter what major city like and realistically speaking it's segregated mm-hmm. and it's this this big gentrified movement going through all the cities the thing that i would say about atlanta though is that specifically for the downtown area mm-hmm. Living here, I don't necessarily feel that. Not just because I live here and I'm trying to advocate for here. No, nah, downtown is mad black. <laughs> downtown is <laughs> super, super black. Like yeah. the, the the culture still permeates. People are still hanging on to things. That that's just mm-hmm. like clear as day. What was the other thing? The, is, the it, second, is, it, I, is it is it what's the what's the price of looking like in the in the places like if we were to move down there and we would stay. What you would get more bang. You would get more bang for your buck. The concept of like finding another studio space. That's why AMP moved down here. That's why uh, I can say it though. Click and Dom Two K. We're talking about moving down here. Um, I can say it. That's out there. Cool. It doesn't cool, man. Yeah, it really doesn't matter to me. Yeah, yeah, but that's why I know. That's why. That's why, yeah. I know. That's why rappers <laughs> move down here. That's why athletes move down here. No matter what, like it's gonna be cheaper unless you go to Texas. Texas would yeah. have a great argument, but you're talking about moving up north and and LA. Like you would get more bang for your buck here if having a big yard, big house, all that stuff. And that's why I don't want to go to LA. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, yeah. You know? it would. The answer would still be Atlanta. International biggest inter, biggest airport in the U.S. is here. I've heard um, nothing bad things about about the Atlanta. Airport. <laughs> I've heard I've heard it's actually like a mess to get through. But those are people who come from small airports. So if I came from an airport like the the one in Austin, where when you enter the door, you can see the, the airplanes through the other side. Once you enter the door, I would obviously say, oh, my gosh, Great this airport. airport is so scary and it's big. <laughs> but that's a silly thing to say. There are clear signs. We just talked about Amer- Americans can't read in this country. There are clear, big signs. All you have to do is have the ability to read and navigate it. It's scary. I would I would think a lot of people who are tourists to any city is scary. If I was coming from, mm, uh, we're all from major cities or whatever, but if I was coming from uh, uh, Wisconsin or whatever, I would think New York is scary as hell. New York is scary as fuck. If you don't know what you're doing, isn't New York scary? Be honest. Bro, yeah. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah. No, for sure. <laughs> Damo, you're, fr- you're from New York. No, you're I'm not from New York. York. I'm not from New York. <laughs> you lived in New York. I I, li- I am from a small ass town in North Carolina, an hour outside of Charlotte. I'm <laughs> not <laughs> from a big city. I'm Salisbury, uh, Salisbury, North Carolina. Okay. I'm not from a big. But city. if you were, if you were tasked, if you, There's if a ton you lived of big in big city hysteria for sure. That's what I'm saying. If you, Damo, if you were living in Salisbury for 26 <laughs> years of your life, and then all of a sudden you were supposed to move to New York City by yourself. You wouldn't know what the fuck to do. You would figure it out, but you wouldn't know what to do. For like two man, days. Big snap map, man. They know yeah, I'm about to say, chat, chat, get you alive. Open up God, the snap map. Not that dumb. Damn. <laughs> Open up the map. You know what a Walmart is. Like, no, nah, it's, it's walkable. If you live that lifestyle, you you be better than uh, somebody. You be better. You I, and I don't want to. I don't want to drill this in because yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I, I know you're going to do it. That's all. I understand. I understand. We told understand. you this how it starts, man. This how it starts. Ultimately, there are pros and cons no. of all the cities. I think. I think the the clear punts on like a New York or L.A. and we've had those con- slight had those conversations as well. Yo, it costs way too much. Like it just that's yeah. cost is just it's astronomical and that could be whether you're poor or you're rich 
at least in a city like Atlanta, if you got some money, it can still feel like you got some money. In LA, you got to have some, you know what I'm saying? It's, yeah. it's a reason why like AMP didn't move to LA. It's a reason why they didn't move to New York. And two of their members are from New York. They moved to a whole different city. Y'all got further. I love how we got, I love how we went down like a 20 minute tirade about Atlanta. We never once talked about Atlanta. We never <laughs> even <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, no, we no, never said Custer, yes or no. We talked about oh, segregation. Oh, talk I about to say the customer, the the customer service thing. I do want to. Yeah. I do want to. I do want to get to the customer service thing, and then we'll move on to some basketball. We're getting to some. Oh, God, basketball. Back now, y'all. Just no, I like up. the hoop shit. Yeah. But um, no, nah, the customer service <laughs> thing. I mean, that's major cities too. And if you go to tourist places that are <laughs> packed and shit, I mean, as you said, it's not. It's not. Mm-hmm. I mean, so, that's not a that, that's if you, if you come if you come down if you come down here if you come to, to Houston and like I I was talking to uh, Isaac and I were having this, this conversation. Listen, I honestly think like I want to I want to leave Houston. I want to leave Texas. Houston is actually a fantastic city, and in terms of like food and customer service, it's one of the best in the in the country. You know, it's crazy. I see I see you say that, and my outside from Atlanta tourist perspective would raise you Turkey Leg Hut. Because I hear Turkey Leg Hut is fucking atrocious. Nah, it is. Turkey Leg Hut is crazy. Turkey and Leg that's Hutt what I'm saying, though. No. But that's what I'm saying. Can't you find a bad spot for everywhere? Though? Any there you, you go, a Damo. You can find there a bad spot. No, 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 no. There's what I'm saying is, bad spot any spot, bad spot yeah, per capita? You can find a bad spot But Atlanta is known for its bad spots. That's the difference. Everywhere is a bad spot in Atlanta. Apparently, like every <laughs> nigga said, nigga but... said apparently been to Atlanta twice, never had a bad experience, and we went to we, all the restaurants yeah, yeah, that Keith yeah, Lee yeah, went yeah, to. Yeah, Stop yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk ball. Let's not man. say. Let's, talk let's not say we had bad experiences. Let's, let's, let's talk not, ball, man. Let, let's not lie about experiences because I've had both. I had a couple scary experiences being in Atlanta to these goddamn Bando <laughs> Wings. Ben you were with us when we went to Bando. You was not with us when we went to Bando, and I'm looking around like, yo, I did go with y'all with the Bando. I mean, that was kind of aesthetic. No, not the second. The second time. Nah, the second I let us see. This is my. This is my bad. Let's talk ball, man. Yeah. All, <laughs> all I'm gonna say is, and I, I ain't gonna drag this no further. But all, all I'm gonna say is, is the, as the motherfucker that uh, is in the suburbs will take the drive to DC. If there's one thing that I will give the Atlantean salesman, I ain't gonna lie. And maybe it's just the, uh, maybe it's just a matter of how niggified the area is, but them DC restaurants <laughs> go ahead and put them in number two then. Cause goddamn <laughs> just this conman out there, bro. <laughs> it's hell, bro. So I don't know. I don't know. It's Wait, everywhere. Real quick before no, we move on stage, I've been in LA like, since April. What was mm-hmm. that? Oh no, I was about to say, Sage, do we not have to leave a restaurant early because of the unsafetyness we felt in that restaurant? Yes or no, Sage? <laughs> I mean, that's I, I, yes, but okay. like right. we was asking for it. That's all I was saying. Niggas, niggas was asking <laughs> for it. What yeah, happened? What when, safety? Okay, so like, like we, we're in the heart of the hood. On. We're in the heart of the hood, and at first it's just us four, right? Then it's like you know a couple of uh, subscribers pull up, and now it's like a good ten. Then it turned into like a good twenty, mind you. Cameras out there the whole time. So then I, I ain't gonna lie, I knew it was over. When uh when when what was Caleb Caleb pulls up, yo, what's good, everybody? I've never seen a a whole restaurant go like this. Mind you, everybody's on the wall. They all went just staring at niggas. I'm like, yeah, it, it's time. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, we're in the heart of the hood. They're gonna ask who the fuck we are and where we're from. And our, some our people are not so like unsafe. That. Our like, security yeah, felt unsafe. Security felt unsafe. Like, yeah, we got I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, I felt yeah. unsafe. I was like, yeah. I ain't gonna lie. Some niggas are gonna literally answer that straight up and go home hurt. Let's not do this. Let's get out of here. Yeah. No. 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 Anyway, we're in a bad area. Um. Before we do, <laughs> before we do officially, 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 move on into the the real hoops talk. Um. I do want to give Mojo his flowers while we're here. I know that sounds crazy. Yeah. Round of applause for Mojo. Big Mojo. The biggest. Um. Especially because, you know, we're in this space, grew up in this space. You came up at the same time as B-Souls, um, my brother, Sage, all these people, Mustard, um, the Rusties, all, we, I keep going down this list. But um, I'm trying to figure out a way to phrase this without being crazy, but you figured out a pivot. You know, I remember, and I could be, no, I'm not mistaken on this. I remember when there was like some ebbs and flows from your channel 
And then didn't you go to you signed with somebody? Clutch points? Wasn't it clutch points? Yeah. Yeah. You signed with clutch points and then to to transition from your channel to clutch points to now this podcast. Uh and there may have been a few more stops on the way or bumps on the road that I might not even be aware of. But just being able to take what you've learned and continue to try and not quit. And that's the main thing and not quit. And let me let me say that again, not quit, because there's so many people who would have quit, who would have done so many other things. I was crazy. Who would have done so many other things or just continue to stay in the lane that they were in. Um, nah, that's commendable. And there are some people that even to this day come to like, you know, be souls or even I hear through the grapevine that are like, yo, I'm tired of doing like the video essays. I'm just. I need to figure out a pivot. And they're at this level now where they have these golden handcuffs and they have these viewers that expect stuff and they they might not be able to stomach that pivot. But it's good to see people, you know, wade through those waters uh, to get to the other side to where, hey, I'm still talking about what I love. I still talk about what I'm passionate about. Um, I can still stay in my lane, but it doesn't look the same as, you know, I'm in school. I'm putting out three, four pages of scripts recording it by myself, editing it by myself, uploading it by myself, and it's an 8 out of 10. And, you know, just to see you come out on the other side of that is like, for real, for real. Like, that's commendable. Yeah, that's, big, that's big. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Look at Mo, man. So inspirational. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I appreciate that. I During that time, bro, I'm like, I started around, I made my first YouTube video ever, 2017. And then I stopped for a little bit, then I picked it up back again. And I was like, you know what? I don't know what I want to do with my life. I don't want to waste my dad's money and just go to school for free. I want to like do nothing for a year and just make videos. Sounds stupid as hell. Sounds embarrassing to say right now, but that's just what I wanted to do. And it worked out, traction picked up. Um, and I just started to, I just wanted to get better at what I did and just perfect my craft. And that just, the hunger just came out of like this pure passion for watching basketball and wanting to talk about what i'm seeing and so once i saw growth got to whatever 30 40k or whatever came to a halt during my junior year i believe in college i'm like okay this is driving me nuts i need to find a pivot and just find new perspective i can do the same things and i know like i have so much value in me i just need to figure out a different lens to portray to show that you know and so I, I remember that I hit I hit up like the CEO of Clutch Points. I'm like, fuck it, I'm gonna go ahead, go ahead and hit him up at LinkedIn, mm -hmm. and he he responded to me, told me to apply here, do that. That's blah, crazy. Blah, blah. And it's damn, not that crazy. that's it's not actually that kind of. Tough. But um, <laughs> did the CEO is nuts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then um, he got me through, did that for a little bit, and then through my school, I saw there was an internship for some shit with Turner. I forget, I think it was like. It was not like House of Highlights or BR related. It was some other shit. Applied to that internship. Didn't get it. I was like, whatever, fuck it. Still doing clutch points. And then around spring, I saw, or summer, I saw another internship for House of Highlights. I'm like, okay, I learned a lot over here. Maybe Anger Bitters for them. Maybe I can take all the production skills and just overall insight of not only the creator field, but basketball too, and apply it here and also learn so much that I wouldn't, that I didn't learn prior in my you know what i'm saying creator work for us experience and then that happened and it just like everything happens for a reason that's like the biggest thing in my mind and so yeah. I, i'm just i'm just continuing to learn and take in take on new perspectives on things mm. yeah. and, and, to, and to all three of y'all for the, the the degree you're using it <laughs> no matter what nobody <laughs> says <laughs> fuck Shit, it yeah. you're using it a little it. bit <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah no i appreciate it though um Let's get into it. Let's get into the real meat and potatoes. How do y'all feel about players, <laughs> ex players specifically, in their platforms, like Gilbert Arenas, Paul George? <laughs> no, we're gonna it's get cool. Gilbert. It's cool. How do we? It should exist for sure. Like it, it's yeah. cool that like it's a variety of now. It's not just a skate bailiff of the world. Like it's cool that there's those opportunities. You see people like JJ Reddick, Gil, who like come up and have really good shows. Not all of them are so successful. I think yeah. a lot of times I think players think it's easier than it is and we see some shitty shows because of it because they think it's just like yapping on a mic I'll say it but like right it's now. Very... i'll say it right now the worst player podcast i've ever seen in my entire life i love him 
favorite player in the league, Trey Young's podcast. Everybody hates Trey Young. I'm like, I've heard nothing. The way he talks, I just can't wrap that in my head and find a pure entertainment from that. But overall, like, there's a lot of players who do it right. Most of the time, players do it right. It's just like a few who's just like, what are we doing right now? Yeah, like Paul George is like people. Those guys that wave know what they're doing, so like they put them in a position to succeed. Some of the ones that do independently, and like you know, because it it takes a lot of effort to run a show and make it good. Like I always tell people, like the main thing with our show is like we just try really hard in every single detail. The players will be doing that because they think it's shit sweet. It's just like a side game to make a lot of money. So a lot of the shows are ass because of it. But it's good overall for the landscape that they have those platforms. Yeah, it it gets real funny because like every player comes on and they're like, oh, like the media, like you guys just be like. Like, you guys just talk, you guys make up narratives. And it was so funny seeing specifically, like, Draymond Green and his podcast. <laughs> and, like, because throughout the playoffs last year, like, it was very cool. Like, hmm. game would end and Draymond would have a podcast up and he would give you insights on, like, everything that was going on. And that, that was very cool. As soon as the summer came and there was no more basketball, he goes on the live podcast and he was like, Oh yeah, like Steph Steph wasn't able to be like the alpha dog in the in the uh, in the locker room, and like KD had to teach him how to win all this type of stuff. And it's like, as soon as you start realizing that, like you have to be consistent and you have to like figure out what topics to to do and formulate like a content plan, then it gets kind of scary because you can't just like lean on on the game, which is which is the benefit of having like a player led podcast is that like they can obviously like say stuff and tell stories that like none of us would ever know yeah. but once the once the once the finals ends and everybody like that finals dip hits now you have to start being creative and i think a lot of players um it's kind of hard for them to like be creative immediately and so like you really have to work for that i, I told i told uh i told roy hibbert last night that i hated the trey young podcast too when he was on our <laughs> podcast oh. <laughs> wait he told What's it sound like is it good he's, he's growing it's good so far. He's growing as a reactionary creator. But he said that he told us that um it's in like these contracts. Like they when they sign on to agency their agents. For, yeah, when they for, sign on to the agent. No, for players, just for players, players in general. Up. Like like players looking at agencies and stuff like that when they're looking for agents, whatever agency they're with, they're looking for like a podcast content uh, creation division. So like when they get on now, like they want they're like they're using avenue avenues like podcasting, YouTube, and streaming. They see that as another thing that um, agencies should have ready for them when they sign there. Mm. Yeah, they're right. Like, that should be a very that should be a value add that brings like it's a huge opportunity for players. Like Paul George probably gave himself a second win that's gonna last ten years after he retires with the show now. Like that's gonna be so huge for him. He doesn't even realize it yet. Like his podcast is legit gonna be humongous. Like look at the Kelsey brothers; they're incredibly famous now. Like if you do it right, the ceiling for a player led pod is insane. And, and there's a high floor because people want to hear a player. But, like, those middle-tier ones that just, like, aren't particularly entertaining, aren't trying very hard, there's going to be a lot of those that come out over the years and just, like, don't go anywhere. And I feel like we're going to see, like, a big burst of them yeah. that kind of dies out over time. Yeah. yeah, I feel like the thing with players, too, that is important, I've heard so many times, J.J. Reddick, you know what I'm saying, he's a top dog when it comes to this shit. He says that NBA players, specifically as athletes, we have to have irrational confidence mm-hmm. and – from what I see, some of them just like have irrational confidence to the point to where they can't be real with themselves to what <laughs> did, having what it takes when it comes to just doing this type of stuff. So it's like some of the worst. Another like terrible podcast that I've seen is like RJ Hampton. He had a podcast. I don't know. Oh, yeah, more, oh, I know. I know. That was just, just those slugs. <laughs> he's a cool player, uh, but it's just like. Stuff like that, like okay, you should you don't know your you're never like, getting RJ Hampton on the show. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> but I and I and I do hate the ones that hot take hunt because we didn't talk about that. But since we're talking about the hot take hunters now, because I want to bring them up. Yeah, I was oh, just God. damn, bro. I was like gonna say. No, nah, I, I I like what it originally was. I don't want to say he fell off, but we, I think what uh what what they were saying is starting to apply. They we're getting to the damn. I got to upload every week. Yeah, I, I got to upload twice a week. All right, and I ain't gonna lie, Bobo sucks. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Thompson, 
10 points, you're a fraud. Like, I ain't gonna lie, like, they're, they're starting to see why people do it. And I think there's a, there's gonna be a pushback. I'll go a step further than uh, dive down. There's gonna be a wave of NBA, player, of NBA players, I'm sorry, is gonna start calling out people that do podcasts and think that's like against culture at some point because they gonna hate that shit. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. I know what it is. It's because the show's owned by Underdog now. So there's a lot of corporate mandates and a lot more people cooks in the kitchen uh-huh. that require you to do certain things. Draymond, his podcast is set up. That he can just like take hiatus however he wants. Yeah, clearly that's not the case with Gills Arena, and they need to have a certain schedule, and that he can't just like do whatever he wants. So you got to fill some time. It's he, that. Yeah. It's that. But day. also, but also at the same time though, and I think it's very like apparent when you hear players talk about other players, like NBA players just think differently about like their brain is just wired differently. So this is the same reason why like if you ask any NBA player that played from 2000 to 2011, they're like, you don't understand. Like, Kobe's the greatest of all time. Like, you just won't <laughs> get it, right? Like, you weren't lacing them up with me. And, like, they're all just – it's it's super weird. And so I think, like, when a lot of them get on here, I think that some of them are hot takey. I think that the thing that Gilbert said a couple of days ago, because he kind of walked it back when, like, the Asar Thompson thing, I honestly think that he – had like forgot what his career was like and he was just like no like i was like i was a hooper and like i like scored like 25 a night and it's just like wired differently i I don't i don't think that was necessarily like hot take like i also think these players don't you know we talked about having like media background and part of that comes with like knowing how to operate in a microphone in front of your face knowing how people are going to react to things you say because you do it a lot these guys don't have that background so they don't realize if i say sr thompson's not like that the whole internet can get mad at me, you know, because yeah. they don't go into it yeah. thinking about it that way. It's just them being them. They think it's just chill. And then there's a big yeah. magnifying glass on the show this big, and it takes a while for them to realize that. Well, let me let me play this. Just I know everybody knows, but. And this is just me. <laughs> but it is reality. You're 20, 20, you're 20 turning 21, averaging 10. You're not in my future. <laughs> As a, GM, scary, as a GM, you're 20. You're about to be a 21 year old rookie. You, you're so far. You're, you're. I mean, if I'm going to have him as a defensive player, okay, cool. But I mean, if I'm going to say make him like a cornerstone, like he is the cornerstone of my future, who's who's 20? Who's 20, 21 right now? But I mean, shit. Think about it though. If if from what you just said, if he's averaging 10 as a first year player, that means he's going to do pretty good for no. no. Later on, nah. once he gets used to the league, year? name me the best twenty-year-old in the in the in the, in, the, in the world right now. Okay. In the world or NBA? In the NBA, and this is just me. Yeah, he did, he did walk it back because he Luka claims Doncic that he Terry forgot. Would have everybody got to be a star from day one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's 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 sad. It's sad. What a. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, like I'd even say to a degree, like how the Tatum in 2018 thing done did for a lot of this generation, where if you're not him off of off the dome, people forgot what the word development truly means. Because I'll even say there's some people that bring up develop, give them time in certain debates, but I think that people also like think that it's a two or three year thing. It's a five to six year thing. Like it's genuinely a lot of time for these players to develop. Um, obviously, I think we all agree whether it was hot take hunty or not. The take is just not that bright. Um, I, I hope nobody's gonna <laughs> hope nobody's gonna gaslight it into a well, he's played thing. I mean, I've thought there's yeah. endless comparisons. We could do endless comparisons, but the most damning one, the most one to one one I can think of is fucking Kawhi Leonard. Like, I'm not gonna lie, the dude averaged 13 in his third year as a Finals MVP, and, and let alone his first year, he averaged eight points. So I, I don't. I don't I don't see the hype on that at all. If you want to say that um he's not a guy that I'm choosing over Cade Cunningham, like maybe he didn't finish a sentence, then maybe I'll go with it. <laughs> but um if that's the end of your sentence, nah, he's drunk. Right. And I also think it's one of those things where like you're up there talking and you have a thought and you just put your foot in your mouth and you just gotta talk yourself out of it and just like keep rolling with it. Like that's hundred percent what he did. Like he just was talking about I think what he meant was like Asar is not like a future superstar, but nobody fucking said that. So like He's arguing against a take that nobody's saying. And he probably didn't mean that, like, a star can't be a part of your, like, rotation. He probably was like, he's not going to be my second star. Nobody has those expectations right now. So he's just, like, arguing a point doesn't exist. So now he looks crazy because everyone's like, where are you getting this from? I think think he's going to catch himself in a lot of trouble, which is fine. But, like, they literally live stream every single day. 
And I have that this take as well about Stephen A. Like Stephen A. gets cooked on the time on every single day. But like, put 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 yourself in his position. Like literally, uh, on live national TV every single day, multiple shows, like multiple hours a day. You're about to fuck up and say some dumb shit at some point. Like I'm I'm sorry, man. I can't I can't say the same thing over and over and over. I gotta be creative, and that's what makes Stephen A. Stephen 100%. A. No, but it's true. And I'll go show. a step further. Um, I. Um, like I, I had an uh, internship, not to y'all internship. Y'all got lucky. I, I had a CBS internship, uh, ABC internship, and they uh, do not give a fuck about basketball. But even there, <laughs> I, I quickly realized, bro, one thing about Stephen A compared to us, he doesn't have time to do the, the long-winded take. He doesn't have time to stutter. And most importantly, he can't walk anything back unless it's like that quick. That quick. So if he says something, y'all, you can't really take it back till tomorrow. And yeah. I don't know about y'all, but one thing the cancel culture Twitter thing has never given a fuck about is an apology. My God, he, <laughs> could, come, he could come on tomorrow and be like, yo, I'm not going to lie. I was tired. I was completely wrong. It is what it is. People are going to go to the tweet before that that had the clip of him saying the dumb shit and still quote it. So it doesn't matter. But I, I, th- I, think the thing, I think the thing that kills me, though, is, and I know somebody's going to say, oh, Omar, you, you claim of not being consistent. He said, Gil said what he said on the 12th. On the 1st, he made a comparison of Chet and Wimby saying that they're not on the same playing field. You kind of got to wait for Wimby because once he gets to a different age, as he mm. ages, he'll be on a whole different level. But which is just counter to what he literally was just saying and then not necessarily wow. not not necessarily right he said listen he said I it. he said if you are he said if you're 20 21 and you're averaging 10 points you're not in my future Wemby is 19 averaging more than 10 points so like if if we're just going off of that like it's not necessarily <laughs> it's not necessarily that and like i do also, that makes it worse low-key also, but we <laughs> all agree though like like listen we all agree it was just a bad take it was a bad take. And like, like, you know, like Bissell says, if you like Stephen A is going to say a lot of stuff sometimes that he's eventually going to have to walk back. And so you see now what he's doing on his podcast where he's just a horny old man because he can't take, <laughs> he can't take every single day spending seven hours of doing serious NBA football stuff. He said, I have to take two hours to be horny. I, I need to get myself <laughs> really I gotta really myself a break. I got to give myself a break. Right. <laughs> Look at no, all he, of his clips from his podcast. I'm I'm not even joking. It's it's about it's all about being being freaky, all that type of stuff. Like no, because what you're what you're saying is right. Because Gil, even even that other day, hold on, let me play it. Let me play the clip. Because I didn't really hear this one. I just heard the the discourse around it. Mm-hmm. But apparently, what he said about the the Euro thing either. The way he said about the Europeans was crazy. Oh, that was about what that was uncalled. What did he say? Before we play, before we play, this is the. This is the part okay, where he doesn't realize the platform he has because this is a joke that like somebody on Twitter would make. That like, if I said this is a joke, like it wouldn't be crazy. But Gil, being Gil, can't say this type of shit, and players don't realize the difference there that they're not just normal people talking to their friends. Like you can't be saying that as a former player. Yeah. So look, the Go Bear choke was questionable but defensible because Dre was coming to protect Clay. Uh, this latest incident left many people scratching their heads. So just, what do y'all think about the situation? <laughs> How do you how do you <laughs> react to this video? He look like hey he about to say something. Wild. <laughs> I know what Dre doing. <laughs> He's taking care of these euros one at a time. Oh my! He waited hey, for everybody to laugh with him too. That makes to push so much worse. Oh. <laughs> and you choking and slapping them back. I get it, baby. Do your thing. Yeah, that's what it is. I think the do your thing. I think I think the do your thing is first. So anyone with me? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's it's, the problem. It's one, of, it's one of those like he obviously is not dead ass, but yeah. it's no, he like, but that's funny because like, <laughs> okay, so like, at the end, well, he's like, well, the, 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 the telling Draymond, do your thing, right? Like, that's 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 why that's the that's part, ridiculous. that's the part. Yeah. The first part, I swear, I've heard like, not just your example, Donovan. I can't imagine him saying a joke like that. Like, he sees a euro, he's. Like that's like a light joke, but with him from former yeah, NBA this player, on me. That put this on me. <laughs> <laughs> but I can imagine that shit. But when you're a former NBA player and you find a shit with the keep going, that's when you fuck up. Like you can't be saying that shit from a position of power in the media where people look yeah. at you and imagine you're a a figure of importance in the space. You can't be saying that shit. Yeah, I don't know. Only people who can get away with that is Cam and Mace, and that's because people don't take them seriously. <laughs> 
Yeah, you exactly. Have to, yeah. You have to be a guy. It's a messenger. That don't yeah. take seriously. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah I, think, I don't even messenger. know. I don't even know who they're backed by, but you you definitely can't. Uh, not being backed by like the people that they're backed by and supposed to be the most backed by. Well, I just, he never. He, yeah, well, no, I'm talking about Cam and Mace. Cam and Mace are back yeah. by Underdog, too? Yeah, oh, yeah. oh, well, shit. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Well, they, right. they definitely are. Yeah. Well, that's different. Uh, <laughs> Gil's, Gil's, like, owned by Underdog. That show is, like, Underdog production. I think Cam and Mace are just sponsored by Underdog. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Underdog, man. Shit. What else are they trying to make? Maybe we can't. Right? We can say, I'm about to say, we can say whatever we want to say. <laughs> so, you know, just, we can go and just, just start saying random stuff. Um, <laughs> who do y'all have right now? What are we? How many games are we in? Around 20, 20, 25, 20, All right, let's overreact. Who, who, who do we have going to the finals? The Celtics. And they're going to win it. This nigga Donovan yeah. is a Boston fan. Okay. <laughs> He's ready. <laughs> okay. He's ready to move. Hey, hey, let me know when you're coming to the town, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I got, I got, I got, I got, I'll take you in. I'll take you in. I finally <laughs> found one guy that likes the city, man. I'll take you in. Boston. It's just I hate it's you. Ironic. Now, here they go. Oh, that, uh, yes, sir. We got some Boston guys in the building. I like this. Hey, don't get it confused. I'm not a Boston guy. I got the Lakers hat. I got the Dodgers hat. Hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all got one Shohei, man. Damn. <laughs> but no, nah, I mean, I'm still... Uh, I, I think the the Celtics would probably make the finals, but I'm not as quite as gung ho as everybody else on them because I feel like a lot of the weaknesses that we had thought about last year with the playmaking issues and just the heavy reliance on Jalen Brown as a secondary playmaker, that's still going to be a problem. I think I think everyone's kind of glossing over it because they added KP and Drew Holiday, who maybe give them enough of like a talent boost that it doesn't matter in the, the day just because the shot making is going to be crazy. But I don't think either of them fix those big issues they had coming in. I think yeah. I'll go ahead. No, Nuggets back to back. Say- I, I I agree. I agree for sure. Um, they have by far the best looking roster or five man lineup in the entire NBA, but there's still like nuanced things that are super important to the team. And I don't know if Drew Holiday and Porzingis is enough to escape those. But I'm still choosing them probably maybe right now to make it to the finals. Even though like in my heart I want to say Milwaukee, but they have too many issues internally going on but i i'm I'm nuggets in boston for now i think i'm 100 percent on your side with milwaukee uh uh, my heart wants to say milwaukee will get the shit together but that's the thing they have to get the shit together as of right now there's no way i'd be shocked if anyone on this stage is about to say in terms of the east it won't be boston um the the issue with boston is um we this is not a brand spanking new thing with them. They're still a similar identity and team. So I'm sorry, I cannot ignore what I'm going to expect in the postseason. And one of my common tropes on the NBA YouTube sphere that people thought was a joke until I said, wait, I'm not. That's one of my non trolls. I'm serious. I don't like teams that can't run. And I ain't gonna lie. The top, the star Ooh. five, hell, Derek White, oh, they can run. Sam Hauser. Luke Cornet, who who, who the other <laughs> dude? I'm sorry, you can't yeah. run. No good. I, when people slice up the Utah, yo, Utah makes their threes and Joe Ingles play deep. Come on, <laughs> tell them to run. They can't run. Get them out of here, bro. That's my biggest concern with Boston, even more than the things we know about them. But at this moment, outside of a believe it take from Milwaukee, gotta go with them in the West. <sighs> I, I for for those that are gonna type it, I just think Minnesota smoking mirrors. Give me Denver for now. Facts. For me, you said I uh, can't run. For me, it's teams that can't pass. And they have a lot of good-ish passers, but nobody that's great, nobody that's dishing it out. Like, Fantastic. you force Tatum to be your lead playmaker because every star has to be a point forward these days, I guess, for whatever reason. And that's just not his game. He should be in the role that Jalen Brown's in, being next to a lead ball handler who, who can just focus on scoring and secondary playmaking. So with those two as your lead playmakers, it's just you're always prone to cold spells in the playoffs. And especially when you're so reliant on threes like they are, Yep. It's just like prone to inconsistency just by your, the way your team's built. Yeah, it's just a top two players like type thing. I I don't want to say they're the worst duo in the NBA, but in terms of just like synergy and you not being able to do something that I can't do extremely well, there's like too much overlap. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to say overlap in there. Hey, we've got a second place where we do the podcast and it's called Playback TV. 
Let's oh, talk wow. about oh, it. Wow. Now let's really talk about it. That's what oh, I was saying. Bro. So like what rings aren't opportunistic? LeBron James, further in his career at this point, has three times the tank Kobe had. And still with less rings. He got his rebound. Oh, he, oh, oh my, man. get the rebound. Oh. Then, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I'll cook any of y'all in the NFL. Like me. Any like one you. of you could get cooked. Uh oh. Huh. Oh, 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 oh my god. Oh my god. No way. Oh, oh my god. god. Oh, oh my god. god. I'm tweeting it out. Oh Luke is my god. daddy. Oh my god. Game, but there just isn't any like there isn't any like spice to them necessarily. Yeah, they don't complement no each other. They don't fix each other's yeah. weaknesses. Damn. Exactly. And that's why Jalen Brown should be a hawk. <laughs> <For Trey? laughs> I, th- I think depth is our biggest problem to be honest with you because like what everyone's been yeah. saying six man rotation solid as fuck and i would even extend it to seven because sam hauser's actually been playing well yeah he's a fax but the days where we have Derek white injured and now sam hauser becomes a six man and everyone gets pushed up now we're playing delano banton minutes O'Shea. Not too much. Not too much. Nah, it, it is too much, man. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> 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 those, those are struggle Way minutes. Much. Those are struggle minutes when he is on the Way court, too man. much. Like, Way too much. Yeah. So that that is the biggest problem with us, and, and the um the playmaking issues. I'm listen. Even in hindsight, I I was still for uh, you know, not signing Jalen Brown to the Supermax and trading him for Dame. That was on the table, but hundred percent same. It's cool, man. Cool. Yeah, I mean, who you got? Who you got in the finals? Um, well, of course, out the West, I have my Los Angeles Lakers if we stay healthy, or <laughs> I'm not gonna hold you. I, you call it smoke and mirrors. I call it the real thing, man. Uh, I, I, I'm taking the Timberwolves <laughs> out the West if they I stay healthy. I, I, I'm riding with it, man. I'm riding with the T Wolves and a freaky Twitter. Um, or the Lakers. Um, I don't have okay. a, I don't have any argument against you, Domo. That's the fucked up. I really don't. They're playing like arguably the best defense of basketball. I'm about to say, hey, that's my Creation thing. Everybody is good. Everybody people want to talk about passing. People want to talk about running. Yes. Hey, man. My thing is that D pause. How do you how'd you, say, how'd you feel about the the twenty twenty one Suns when they they came up that year? Did you think you they were about the, uh, You talking about the pick and roll, pick and roll, pick and roll Suns? I mean, yeah, when they, made they got a little. Game. Yeah, they got a little lucky in the postseason, I'll admit. Um, very mm-hmm. lucky considering they had uh Chris Paul on one arm and somehow got out of there. Uh, but uh I mean they were obviously a good team. I think they were just too much of a lateral team, and truth be told, the something that gets lost in the modern day conversations, they didn't have him. I'm, so, I'm sorry, but <laughs> Chris Paul, Devin Booker at that point in time, Devin Booker now is a conversation. Devin Booker at that point in time, just not Giannis. I'm sorry, you're you're going to go to a team that hey. Their LeBron didn't get hurt, and shit's about to hit the fan for you. So it is what it is. They I keep that core. They keep that core. Devin Booker turns into a him, and Mikael now, Bridges emerges now, as the second best player. Oh my god, that's totally different. The Who Brooklyn Suns totally would put up numbers right now. I, but, but, <laughs> but let me also say, coming out the East, I, I, hey, I've been saying it the last one or two years, and I'm gonna keep saying it, man. I need another Lakers Celtics finals, man. I, I need it. I need it for the body. So, so I got the Celtics come out the East. I don't trust the uh the defenseless Bucks. That that defense is suspect. You're gonna run into an issue when Damian Lillard is being attacked on the defensive end of the basketball. And I don't trust Dame. Everybody knows, man. <laughs> that is Bay Area Kimball Walker. That's Kimball Walker what? with an album. That's just that's him, Kimball y'all. Walker with a freestyle. I'm not a Dame guy. Wow. Wow. Yo, I trust Dave. Freestyle is so nasty. <laughs> I don't trust Dave. I'm, I'm with you, Dom. Don't worry. I'm with no, you. I, I think I'm, that's a bit too far. <laughs> I, I'm in, in terms of everybody, put him in that conversation of, uh, and I know it's not everybody. I, I think it's extreme casuals that even have this train of thought. But the Curry comparison crowd, I have to say, he's closer than Kimba. He's closer to Kimba than he is to Curry. I'm sorry. No, it's, he's it's, not. It's, you are hanging yes, on to it. You are yes, hanging on to five-year-old comparisons. <laughs> yeah. oh, you said he's closer to Kyrie than he is. Man. I'd agree with you. But Why would you disrespect think... Kyrie like that? Oh, That's my God. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, brother. Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait, wait. Do, you have, wait <laughs> do you have Kyrie over Dame? At one point in time, I did. Now I don't know. Okay. He still really? thinks Bobo is good, so I don't. I don't know. <laughs> I believe, well, well, I believe in Bobo. I believe in him. It's different. <laughs> yeah, hold on. I, I, you believe in Bobo. You believe I in believe him. Believe in him. 
to do he what? Not I believe he's he's not I think, yeah, I yeah. think Bobo, well, I think Bobo could be like he a, he Yeah, he's real. I think he's real. He's a guy. He's he's real. He's yeah, he's a person. He's an he's NBA a player. Person. I believe yeah. his name is Bowl. I think he give people serviceable minutes off the bench, man. I think he's a he's a I believe in you to give people serviceable serviceable minutes off the bench more than I do Bobo. I have, <laughs> I have Bobo stats up no, right now. I have now. Bobo stats up right now. Can I, can I tell you what they are? What is Bobo? Stats? Is Bobo, Bobo oh, this year has played in five games. He's averaging 0. 0.4 points per game, 0. 0.6 rebounds per game, zero assists, zero steals. Hey, Mo can get one point. I know it. Mo can get one. <laughs> Wait, he has how many minutes? minutes? Wait, how many minutes has he played this year? How many minutes has he played? He averages 2.4 minutes per game. I mean, what the hell is he supposed to do? <laughs> he can't what get the in hell? the game. What he is, can't get in the game. What is he supposed to No, we're reading no. all these stats. Like, he's he's running around like Tony Snail. Like, no, it's, it's, he's, he's getting think? two minutes in five games. Do you know how hard it is to get two minutes a game? <laughs> what? <laughs> you got to be ass. <laughs> and he's playing on the Suns. Everybody yeah. has been hurt in Phoenix this year. And they... <laughs> Look down the bench and they're like, "Damn, that's nah. next. <laughs> He's not yeah. the next. One. I'd rather get next. He's to play two minutes a game because at that point you have a of my ego, my reputation, bro. <laughs> you two know what though? Minutes. Why? See, this is this is what I be talking about about teams misutilizing their their G League. And I, I don't think Phoenix Phoenix may have a, an affiliate, but yo, why is he not in the G League? Why is Try. he seven two? Oh my God! Get that man on the G League. Get, <laughs> get him on these charter buses. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Stop giving a first class flight to Bobo. Get him on these charter buses. <laughs> no. He can't even fly no more. <laughs> no. <laughs> use that. That's, that's fantastic. That's yeah, great. A greyhound. That's great. He's a gray. He's a greyhound guy. Like, come on, bro. <laughs> you get lobster tonight? No. no I'm, I'm writing that down. That's great. <laughs> nah, y'all are wicked, bro. No, I wouldn't tolerate this, real. man. I don't. I, I, don't I can't say nothing. Man, he's out here averaging 0. 0.6 rebounds. Man, I can't. <laughs> what can I say? What can I say? Somebody said, Let's put him on the sunsets. <laughs> Yo, stop. All right. <laughs> okay. I don't know what's making me say this right now. I have just a fraud alert that's been going on. It's because I probably don't like Tyrese Halliburton. Honestly, I just need to get the hate out. Oh, there. my. Oh. The biggest fraud. Because we're going to play some word association. What does that mean? The. I, what I don't yeah, like he that. Got cold to me. Wait, hold on, let me. Someone in chat for him. Okay, okay. We're gonna play some word association. I'm gonna say a word, some phrases. You fill in the blanks. Okay. The biggest fraud in the NBA to me is the Indiana Pacers. Oh, uh, are, are we going team teams, players, or just whatever? Teams, anyway. players, mascots, whoever uh, you think the biggest fraud is. Uh, yeah, coaches, is crazy GMs, whoever you want to say. And Not it's because no look passes. Say that. This is no look passes, bro. I'm telling you. Just oh, those are fraudulent. Those are fraudulent. Oh, yeah, those <laughs> are yeah, okay. I just can't. Those are I don't think they yeah, can the win against the, the 27 real teams. points per game on like elite true shooting percentage. That's not fraudulent. But those fake passes are whack. Are you, 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 you think he could do that for? And even if he does, I just don't think that they'll win the games when it matters. So even if he does do what you think he can't do, you still no, don't believe it. Don't matter. He just on a hot streak, Bamo. Doesn't matter. Yeah, he just he just be hitting shit in your in, in your face, man. He doesn't create space for it. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, and pause. This is crazy. Okay, I'm on yeah, your but... side, not all right, man. <laughs> Anybody that slanders highly getting cold. This is crazy. So Pacers <laughs> fans are in the chat right and, and now. When they, and when they got spanked by the Lakers, timeline was quiet. Hey, I didn't told, nobody I told say you. nothing. I'm on your side, bitch. <laughs> they got spanked. They got spanked by the Bucks. They got spanked by the Bucks. A timeline, oh, man. This is the calm night in the NBA. Giannis going for what 64. What I do? I'm quiet. I'm getting cold. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Everybody, but, uh, who, everybody biggest was a fraud. fraud. In the NBA is uh, the Clippers. Oh, I, I, yeah, I, yeah. I was gonna say if it has to be a team, I'll, I'll go Clippers. If it has to be a player, I'll admit it's starting to go away because mm. people are starting to cool off on them. But I still want to say Kawhi for this moment in time because uh, I still feel like if you press, if you bring up Kawhi, people still feel that way. But I'll admit people are not bringing up Kawhi like that anymore. So and I might it, uh, that take might be old now. Is it too late to say the Warriors? Are we past that? They can't be frauds no more if they just ask? They're not frauds. We all think they suck. Man. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant is my answer. Mm. 
Mm. Yo, he not a bad not answer. Good. I know where you're getting at. Not a bad yeah, answer. He's, but he's been good this year, so I'm backing off my takes about him. But coming into this year, I was like, Devin Booker might be better this year. Yeah. But this year. KD can't miss a shot this year, so I don't know. I guess I got to back off. Nah, he he means right now, though. Like, he's talking about right now between him and uh, D-Book. He still thinks he's a fraud. <laughs> That's the Who first three quarters. Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant can hoop in the first three quarters. Um, Don't let the game get close. Yeah, my thing with them is just the playoffs. That's it. Regular season, great guy. I'll say Same it. thing with Joel Embiid. But... Cat? You know, that's kind of unfair. Cat? You're still on the Damn. cat thing? <laughs> Damn. Damn. I, I, think, like I think Cat is comfortable as I'm the third best player in Minnesota. He is having now, a crazy I, season, though. Yeah. So if he yeah. feels like and that season is still fraudulent. And that's man. why I think it's fraudulent. Because yeah. I, don't, I, I just don't think that it's going to happen in the playoffs. And like I've seen him, I we, like we've seen Cat oh. in a playoff situation before, and it hasn't looked great. So like you can do whatever you want right now. I just don't think that once we get into the first or even second round that you're going to be able to do what you're like. He's not going to be able to average twenty on like fifty percent shooting, forty two percent from three. That's not happening in the playoffs. So I would say him. I figured it out. Demontis Sabonis. Wow. There will never be a year. There will never be a year where he's part of an effective playoff team. It'll never happen. Damn. You can't build a defense around his rim protection and his offense. You saw the Warriors did last year. The Warriors last year were not a serious contender. And they were able to get past the Kings, and everyone was like, it's a great playoff win. The Kings are frisky. No, it was a mid-off because DeMontis Sabonis is so easy to game plan for. We saw the Warriors do the most basic dare him to shoot defense, and they could not figure that shit out. His passing is null and void whenever you're sagging 10 feet off of him and making him shoot every play, and he won't do it because he's not a volume shooter. So his post play just becomes irrelevant when you're placing a team that's just a little bit smart. He really is just Ben Simmons, though. Damn. I think, I think, I think they just got to get... Worst defense. And, <laughs> and you can argue it's um, construction. I think they just really got to double down on that rim protector at the five, and he'll be more serviceable. He but, can't uh, play the four, though. Yeah, exactly. I think, hard. I, think, I, I think he can do it. I think we over hating on him a little He's bit. He's too now. slow. He's too slow. I don't think we hate him. Hey, 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 hold on now. Don't don't bring up speed. I'm gonna be on your side. Don't don't, don't do that. Man. <laughs> <laughs> you can't run. I don't like him. <laughs> <laughs> um, some, someone said it's a bonus. A top five big. A top five big no. name. It's a bonus, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Wait, wait. How many bigs are you actually naming? That's better than Sabonis, in your opinion? Definitely one of five. <laughs> so centers and power forwards, we're gonna go like we'll power big. Yeah. just big. Right, let's name them. Yeah, obviously Jokic, Embiid, AD, Giannis. Bam, bam. Are we still taking Zion, even though he's been slow to start this year? No. To be honest, are you Zion, taking Zion? Zion? To, to be honest with you, yes, but I, I would. Yes, honestly. I'd rather yeah, bet I'm on Zion. Zion. I'd rather bet on Zion getting in shape than I would Sabonis. But Donovan said, oh, oh, I, 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 I don't know if I would do that. Wait, 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 wait. Bam, y'all like Sabonis, do you? <laughs> Wait, say the take one more time. One more time. You'd rather bet on Zion to do what then? I'd rather bet on Zion getting in shape and looking like he did last year than I would on Sabonis completely changing his game and fixing all the flaws that are just baked into his game that he can't fix. Hell no. Never mind. I'm not I'm not with <laughs> Isaac no more. <laughs> I don't know about betting on Zion uh cut cut the cut the twinks. I don't even know if that. even if you don't want Zion, Sabonis is not better than Bam. Yeah. Yeah, that's nowhere just... close now. He's not. Yeah. He's not better than him. So there's I, five. There's five right there. Okay. Cool. Also counting power four. Wait, Jul- Julius Randle. I'm taking Julius Randle over Sabonis. Porzingis. Oh, that's a mid off. That's a mid off. Taking Sangoon over, over him all day. Sangoon. Sangoon though. Porzingis. Y'all taking Sangoon over Sabonis right now? Chet. Chet already. Chet. Vic. Chet. That's crazy. You'd rather have Sabonis over Vic right now, Omar? Yeah, for this just one season, right? Just this rookie. Yeah. Now nah, you put some. You put Vic with a capable point guard. Vic was playing with Fox basketball. right now. Oh my god! I don't. I don't, I don't know though. I don't. I don't, I don't know. That's music. What I'm saying. What? I don't really know though. So like, I know that sounds crazy because Trey Jones, to Jeremy, to De'Aaron. Fo- oh my! He god. could be just lost out there. He could just be <laughs> lost out there. He's playing with handcuffs behind his back on that team. They're purposely like, trying well, to nice. score the game tonight. tonight. They beat the Lakers. Lakers, the Lakers are getting beating the shit. Like yeah, they're beating the shit out of us. <laughs> I know for those that are typing in chat, yes, it's not on the screen, but I am watching Jackson Hayes. Oh, he made it. I watched Jackson Hayes, you know, go to the line. Yeah, we were down 23 at one point in time. This this seems sucks. So he's like, he he sounds like he's coming in at like eighth. 
in terms of all bigs. It sounds sound like he's in the 10. He's just but on to, the lower But to be team. honest with you, oh, is he better? You asked me Evan, Evan Mobley? That, yeah. That's what. Are you, are you no he, no over listen, Sabonis? Hell no. Listen, also, I, I don't oh like God. this guy. I'm not a fan of his. I'm taking Rudy Gobert over Sabonis as well. I'm oh, not a Rudy fan either. But but the the I'm, not a I'm not a Ruby, I'm not a Rudy fan, but I might have to say Defense this season. Matters. This yeah, season, we're not people don't talk about it. Defense I think Rudy's matters. having his best defensive season much. this year. I ain't gonna lie. That, that wait, so are you are you taking Nick Claxton, Jared Allen? You taking those guys over him as well? No. no, they're not. Really they're not Gobert on, on defense. <laughs> yeah, they're not DPOI. Well, yeah, I was. Nick is really I, good. No one's taking Jaren Jackson. Jackson. Y'all taking Jaren Jackson? Take Jaren Jackson? Hell, we can have a conversation. Oh, that yeah, might be a fraud for player. Jaren Jackson. That's the closest one yet. Yeah, they're both. That's the closest one. Yeah, Jaren Jackson's like my fraud. Right Fuck now. why? Jaren Jackson's my fraud. Oh my god. <laughs> Jaren looks like shit right now, but it's also because he's playing on the worst offense in the league with no organization. Last time we saw him with the row point guard, he looks more capable. He's not having to fucking create his own shots off isolation every time down the court. Y'all gonna hate me because I'm about to get real nasty. I am taking Aaron Gordon over him. Well, oh, 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 <laughs> I know what you mean. Wow. Sabonis is better for As talking like who should rank higher. But if you're trying to win basketball games, thank you. The, Sabonis yeah, I'm about to say if the Kings were trying to win a playoff series and they had to pick between Aaron Gordon and Sabonis, I'm just not surprised if Aaron Gordon got picked up. That's all I'm gonna say. Like 28 teams in the league. Yeah, 28 teams in the league. No, the problem is they both have to be your third best player. And if you need them to be your third best player, Aaron Gordon fits next to other stars so much 100%. more. That's fair. Yeah, very fair. And and we have a better defense. Like I just don't. I have. I don't have those concerns. Yeah. That sounds like my Alonzo Ball argument when he was healthy. I get it. Um, this <laughs> is. I, I was it. on the Alonzo side. I understand it. I understand it. He might not be as good. But who does he fit next to better? A lot of guys. Oh, hey, brother. Hey, that, that was me with Chris Zingus? Middleton and Russell Westbrook in like 2019. Man, so. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, what's it called? Um, Porzingis. Okay, back to... Wait. Right, no, Porzingis. Porzingis being better. I, I, I mean, I'm not Porzingis mad. Porzingis is debatable. I think Porzingis is the second best player on the Celtics. We're trying to, we're trying to, put, we're trying to put Sabonis at like 15th. I ain't going <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's right. I'm just saying, yeah, we low key settled on him at eight and then named five more bigs. That's kind of fucked up. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Scotty okay, Barnes? Okay. No, we, just we, we even get, we're not even getting to smaller forwards like Siakam and stuff like that. I was about to say, is like, LeBron, is LeBron a forward? I was about to say, LeBron, Tatum? Alabama Carroll? I don't know. We can keep going. <laughs> uh, this is well, nasty work. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> get up, hey, someone said Vucevic. Don't get me going. <laughs> Bro, so, okay, Kings fan uh, put a stack. I'm joking. I'm joking. Well, you finna have that. Big well, is crazy. Um, next word, I'm joking. I'm joking. Next, <laughs> next word association. The biggest surprise, and it could be again team, player, uh, decision making, all this stuff like that. Whatever. The biggest surprise T-Wolves. of this season yeah, is T Wolves over line. Has, has to be the Wolves. T Wolves over line. There's oh. just there was no way preseason to think that they would be the number one seed let alone a top four playoff team like they are far like they are the best defense in the league cats been playing well ants like taking another step go bears you know regain form like they we were talking about blowing them up because it was just clearly not a good fit last season and in what three four months they've been able to get everything together and so like they are they are a legitimate threat to like get to the western conference finals and get to the finals like it's them or nothing. Yeah. Jordan Poole. Like Jordan Poole is my no, answer. Yeah. I was going to say, mm. Jordan Poole is my answer, too, because oh, no, I, knew, I knew he had questions as a player, but 16 points on 14 shots a game? That's a different level of ass. Not a lot of people can do that in the game. The game. That's different. Was so good, and you got to respect it. You, you got to respect, respect how ass and all the wizards. <laughs> yeah, man. As as That's the talent. DC guy, as the DC guy, let me tell y'all. Shit, I don't know how you do it, man. Good shit. Good shit. <laughs> let me tell y'all what. <laughs> Shoot, every person that likes the wizards, they were like, finally, you know what? Fuck it. Pool ain't that good, but it finally sets the motion that we're tanking, and we got a good young score. He's gonna be inefficient, but we got a good young score. Uh, you you've activated the trap card, buddy. <laughs> he sucks. <laughs> oh my god! I, I thought he would bro. average like twenty two on like that was never gonna shots. Happen. That was never like, gonna like, happen. Like you know forty percent, thirty two from. I was expecting bad efficiency, but at least twenty points. Oh, I went into god. the Wizards Reddit like a couple weeks ago, live on a pod. <laughs> Folks, him his ass, <laughs> fucking software engineer, CPA type. <laughs> Applications, they want him out of there so <laughs> to get a CDL. <laughs> yeah, him, man. that's tough. Finding him a new career. 
Uh, my biggest surprise, I would have to say, is between honestly being real, the Orlando Magic. I knew that they would be good. I, I knew they'd be good. I didn't know they would be this good. And I'm scared now that now are we going to have to speed up the timeline and set expectations for this team? Because we're past the times of just allowing teams to be. It, it seems like you just can't allow young guys to show improvement and just be who they are. They have to have some level of expectation now compared to the young teams that came up in the past. So the Atlanta Magic surprised me. And I will say, because I'll – I, I, I thought I was above the curve. I thought I was ahead of the curve. I thought I was like ahead of the tide and trying to put people on. Man, the Detroit Pistons surprised me with how ass they would be. I thought they would be <laughs> I did not yeah. think they took a good. step back. I don't get. They had <laughs> the coach. Is crazy. I, yeah. I thought it was. I, I thought the talent would mesh in right. some way. Yeah, man, they just took a step back. I, I had a like three young. I want to say the Magic. It was the Magic, the Rockets, and the Pistons. I was like, all three of these young teams are going to take leaps this year, and they're going to be great. I was two for three. I can hang my hat on that. Two for three isn't bad. But, yeah, I was not expecting them to be this bad. 20-something losing streak, only two wins on the season. Awful. I got yeah. some that nobody's mentioned that technically, no matter what we didn't know, we still can't say we expected this. Scoot Henderson being this bad. Low key. Yeah. That's kind of You're not watching ball. You're not watching That's ball. That's kind of crazy. Not crazy. I'm not his last lie. two games, I say, his last two games been he's different. Come back. He's yeah, yeah, he's starting to come back. Yeah, yeah, he's starting to come back. Hey, his last two games, he and could, I don't know what it was. He, he put goggles on but, and got healthy. Now he can play basketball. That's what I'm saying. He couldn't I'm, see. I'm, I'm he not ignoring him over two weeks. And we thought that was the take, but then he had a bad game the day after. With the goggles on, yeah. And my issue with with people – just ignoring Scoot, I agree. I like I, I'm one of the people who are like, yo, the Charlotte Hornets should have probably taken him over Brandon Miller or whatever. Mm-hmm. But Brandon Miller is Hooper right now. No one's yep. it's like ever since the draft happened, he just like doesn't exist anymore. And he's over here averaging a quiet like 17, shooting 50 percent from the three point line over the last 10 games. Mm-hmm. It's hooping. So it's like I think uh I think Zion adding all the weight back again was surprising because last year he came Dude. out skinny. Dude. <laughs> I mean, not to me. Maybe last year, last year training came around. He got he got like cut, and he was averaging twenty seven, looking like a legit MVP candidate for twenty games before he got hurt. He came out this year like he didn't give a fuck again, and it wasn't even it, now the fact that we're not even talking about the injuries. We're just like, does he give a fuck? That's like I thought the issue would be injuries. Still, I thought we were past the whole weight thing, but he just completely regressed to where he was like three years ago when he came into training camp that one time injured, and we were like, who is this D lineman? Like he's nah. fully back. Listen, <laughs> pictures, nah, pictures of skinny weird. Zion are like I look at those in the summer and I treat them the same way that I see clips of Ben Simmons shooting dunk. <laughs> I just don't pay attention to it, right? Because I know come come opening night, you're gonna be a different person. You, yeah. That that person is not yeah. gonna be here. But last year he was like he was legit a superstar last year before he got hurt. Like yes, that yeah. guy just isn't here this year. Like he's legit just worse in so many ways that are probably mostly related to his body and effort level. And I know he's had some comments about, like, I need to buy into the system here. So maybe there's some behind-the-scenes stuff where he's just not fucking with the program there and there's maybe some personality clashes. Whatever it is, I thought he was going to continue to be a superstar and not regress to rookie Zion. So that's yeah. kind of weird. I'm not going to lie to you. I don't know what uh, NBA player you know with soda cans in his bathroom. You wouldn't have to worry <laughs> about. Like, when that – I'm telling you. That's that crazy. Was new. When I heard that, I was like, yeah, Zion got a problem. Soda cans? Cans? <laughs> Plural. <laughs> No, Plural. Oh no, no. When Walk I heard that, the like, kitchen. listen, I'm, I, I'm the type of guy that when women get out there blasting your stuff, I typically don't say much. I'm like, okay, she's just exaggerating. There's no way Mariah Mills, the, the porn star, is just going. Yeah, you got soda cans in your bathroom. She does not tap into the NBA enough to know that that's a that's something like that's to your weight. That's just who you are. You're just soda cans in the bathroom. You're, you're just that. that's crazy. Man, it's the worst soda. It ain't he even puts the workout zero. video up, and he's in the kitchen. I seen kitchen material and a workout video. I said, yeah, I, red flags <laughs> everywhere this summer. He might be the get on Yes, but, sir. Oh, man. This is, you know what? You know the goat this, soda. You know what's fucked up? This wing place I ordered from today, the wings I was eating prior to, guess what they gave me today? No, it's just crazy. Oh, it's just crazy, bro. It's man. How many, grams, I, how many grams of sugar is in that can? Yeah, let's find out, bro. I, I, I promise you, like fifty four, bro. It'll it pass, but I'm not the. I'm not. A I think it's in the seventies. No funny shit. You said how many grams of what? Sugar. Sugar. Seventy, right? Yeah, six sixty. 
Tuesday? Okay. <laughs> hey, I took some out. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> <took some> out. <laughs> my my two biggest surprises, uh, first is the Dallas Mavericks. I don't I don't know. When I watch it, it just feels like the the Western Conference Finals team type of vibe uh from a couple years ago. I just get that vibe back, man. And Luca looks happy, you know. He's playing out there again with these kids. I seen him last season. He looked like he didn't want to I, I thought he was going back to Slovenia for real, for real. Like, he just did not look like he wanted Man. to be out there. I don't know what that was. He looked like he was not having a good time. Um, yeah, but Derek Lively's been looking good, all that stuff like that. And then I should probably not use the word surprise for these guys. But I just thought, man, y'all should be better. But they've let so many teams just pass them. And they, they kind of went all in just a little bit. The Cavs, yeah. like, they, people yeah. just forgot. They did all that for Donovan Mitchell just to be – like playing they're in play i named darius garland right specifically i would name him specifically yeah. because i think a I year ago because yeah, yeah or or jb but i would say the reason why i'm going darius over jb is because i was a major i was wrong person on darius garland last year i was like all right yeah y'all got me i wasn't watching Cavs games in 2018 ah you exposed me I'm watching them now smoothest game in basketball cool i'm watching the, the like a couple games this season and keyword on a couple because I can't keep I can't watch these games. I can't watch this. Like what what is going on? What happened? I don't know. Did, did I, I hate to sound like cat? Did he just lose aura? Like what the fuck? I don't I don't, I don't know, bro. I, I don't know. It, it looks like D Mitch is back in Utah. Except fair enough, this team can run, and and even then the bench players can't run. So it, it's it's like ah uh, I don't know what they happened. Shoot, they can't yeah they can't shoot. Mitchell at Robinson all. happened. I That's think what I think at this That's point. I think Not at this much. point, D. Mitch is the <laughs> most non-mentioned trade asset in the league right now. I think low that, key, the best player on the trade block is Donovan Mitchell because nobody thinks he's on the today. trade block. You about especially to get out today, Evan yeah. Mobley and, and uh, Darius are both going to miss like a month and a half to two months. Mm-hmm. They're going to implode, and we're going to be getting into that news cycle real fast with D. Mitch. Like, you're right. Yeah, they're about to get they're about to get way worse because of those two injuries. But that's that's a, that's what I'm talking about. Like we were talking about the Bulls and Zach Levine and stuff like that at the it's beginning not. of the season, more the beginning of the season. Yo, the Cavs are like right there. Like I don't even they're know why. 500. Right, that's what I'm saying. they are like you to know. Be fair, it's been a lot of injuries, so that's like yeah. they have, they haven't been able to like really get cohesion at all. And like when that starts as early as training camp, it's hard to recover from that unless you got like superstars that can carry the load. And as great as Donovan Mitchell is, with those even with those injuries and guys being gone. They don't have a team that's like made for him to carry. Like I said, we don't. They don't have shooting. They don't have a DPOI go bear in the middle because you know Evan Mobley was one of those guys that was injured too. Yeah. So it's it's just hard when you don't have a shooting foundation and your defenders are going in and out and your playmakers are going in and out because he's breaking his face every five seconds. Like yeah. it's just a lot to try to hold together at once. All right, that's I've cool. That's cool. Oh my bad. Say, but that's cool. They're all healthy. Theory, theory land, theory land. They're all healthy. How many more spots up in the East do you think they are? I think they're top right five seed guaranteed they're, they're ninth, if they're healthy. Five seed? Top five. Probably four. Five is Indiana. Ooh. They can get that high. They'll compete for five and six. Yeah. I think the top think, four. If Orlando going to keep winning games. But five five and six yeah. for what they were supposed to be with D-Mitch, that's yeah. kind of. I don't think they get the four. I think we're doing too much now because I ain't going to lie. I, don't, I I think Joel Embiid, as special as Donovan Mitchell is, Joel Embiid will just drag you to wins in the regular season. It just is what it is. Don't overthink it. So I think uh, – and the teams in green got it. At that point, I would have to say that they will not only um, catch up to but then surpass either Indiana or Orlando. Don't think that's happening. I give you that they can pass the team like the Knicks. Um, this, this team has two duos that they need to get rid of. Now, wh- whichever pair of – Point uh, guard center, you want to pack up? That's fine. But Evan Mobley to Allen ain't working, and Darius Garland and De- Donovan Mitchell ain't working. Yeah, they, the Cavs, they got a lot yeah. of work to do. I feel so sorry for Cavs fans because this is the first time that they've had success without someone named LeBron a part of their organization. And the second that they do, damn, you have just a bad playoff series. Okay, cool. Face off against the Knicks, whatever. You know what I'm saying? After that, Injuries on injuries on injuries during the during the early stages of the season. And on top of that, you're facing someone who doesn't put you in the right position every day, and you have to call him your head coach. So it's like you're cut. Yeah, he better learn how to coach college teams. He's on his way out. <laughs> he better get ready for Syracuse. <laughs> um. Okay. Um. Couple more. The Allen for Levine Demar. Oh <laughs> that was crazy. God, the college, the college coach thing was crazy. But oh, um, one more. The set, my bad. The 76ers surprised me. I think they're actually really good. And I've been calling them frauds the past like two years, especially Joel Embiid. 
I think they can actually make a run with this team. They're actually really good with Nick Nurse. Yeah. Okay. Um, John Morant comes back. The Minis- the Memphis Grizzlies win blank amount of games this season. Oh. I was going to say, John Morant comes back. He reminds you that he's at at worst the top four point guard in the league. People forget about him. But uh, in at terms worst. of, at, yes, at worst. Um, at worst four. If you want to say a guy like Reese passed him or, or Fox, fine. But people forgot how great John Morant is. Not good, how great John Morant is Name the four. because he hasn't played. Name the four. What do you mean, Lu- Luca Curry for sure? Then you can then you can have a carousel between if SGA counts. Yeah. Um, you can have a carousel between SGA, Ja, uh, Fox, and what's what's dude name? Tyrese. 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 Yeah, it's it's literally a debate between them. But I think the only two that you 100 percent stamp you're trolling if you say Ja's better than is Luca and Curry. Think again, people yeah. just and see SGA. him go away. People people just see him go away and forgot how great, not good. Great John Morant is. It's just ridiculous. But I think um was better than John last year. So I don't that's fine. That's fine. But it was the it, it wasn't it wasn't a tier above. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But um in terms not of the Grizzlies good. winning games, shit. They I got mean, six. <laughs> Fuck. Uh <laughs> damn. When Jock ja, ja comes back, when Jock ja comes back for the rest of the year, assuming he like stays healthy and does all that, yeah. I think they win 31 extra games. So how many like, games are there? There's there's 59 games left at this point in the season. So like if you put 38 over that amount of time or 31 over that amount of time, it equates to like a 43 win pace. Mm. I think oh, they're better I than that. It, I think it's a serious as checking their schedule. With, with is <laughs> yeah. Dude, they're gonna be good. They're they're not gonna be quite as good as like when they were at their peak, like two seed shit, because they don't have Steven Adams, don't have Brandon Clark, don't have Dylan Brooks, like they don't have that depth they once had. But I think that core of Bain, Ja, and Jaron Jackson is one of those cores like we talked about. Um, I forget who we're talking about. That they just win games in the regular season. Like that's just a formula that works night in, night out. They're going to try harder than you. They're going to produce more turnovers. They're going to rebound. They're going to have that point guard to drive the offense. Like that's a really high floor that I think they get more to like a 46, 47 win pace. Yeah, I think right. with them, I, I think with them is going to come down to. It's going to be a real truth teller with John Morant because if he comes back because of how shitty that energy is with that team because yeah. of the stench right now and how bad it is. If he really can come back and put them on a 43 win pace, 43 win pace or even above that, okay, John really is that goddamn great. Like he really is. Yeah. But if he comes back and the miss dunks is nothing but guys going off, well, oh, he, oh, nah, he's just missing dunk. If he comes back and it's like, all right, he's putting up numbers. But we're, he's looking like a 2017 Devin Booker where the numbers are there. Hey, you got 70 points. You still lost to Utah. That's when we're going to have – I'm going to have a real conversation. Like, all right, is Ja that great or was it just looking good? The energy around the team was different. You had dogs around you. Now you got Marcus Smart cussing the team out on the sideline. People – Anthony Edwards is going in the building saying, yo, it's never been this dead. If Ja can fix yeah, that, he it. might be everything that, like, that Sage is saying. He might be everything yeah. that everyone believed last year. But if yeah. he doesn't, he comes back, he look like Jordan Poole out there. Conversations will be yeah. had and, and Reese will fair. be at the beginning of those fair. conversations. That's fair. I just – that's one of – and, like, I think, like, in a regular season that they are better than a 43-win pace. But coming into the season middle, we'll see, like, how – for for somebody who can run up and down, we'll see what his conditioning is like when whenever he first comes back. I think it's going to take time to acclimate. So that's why I don't – that's why I think they're probably going to be closer to, like, 43, 40 win pace instead of the Ja Morant that we all know. Like, it's going to take about two, three weeks to start feeling normal. Yeah, And that's a good point you made about the vibes being so shit right now because, like you said, it's going to tell us a lot about Ja because that's the opposite of what it was before. Before, they had the best vibes in the league. They had a great coach who instilled a great program, and he could just be a part of that. It wasn't all relying on him. And now it's going to be fucking relying on him. So, like, he has to do some superstar stuff he's never done in the past. So, I, I didn't even think about that. That's a good point. Maybe it will be closer to 43 for that reason. Yeah, I think I think that I'll be fighting the good fight and looking like a Josh Stan when I promise you I'm not a Stan. I just hate it when people have amnesia. But I think yeah. that um they get around 38 more than they do 43 because dog, I mean y'all mentioned it. The injuries and the vibes different. Remember, remember the takes a couple years ago where yo, this team might be better without John Morant, which if that's not stupid, then okay, I don't know what we're talking about. But now it's like, nah, you're you're Superman. So go ahead, put the cape on. Let's get to work. 
And uh, I think obviously he's not gonna hit the hit the ground running. I'd be shocked if he did that. But uh, over time he'll get he'll get it going. But I think this team no shot is above a nine seed. They've lost that many. Games. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And I kind of feel like he's built for that. Like everything we time we hear him talk, it seems like he like knows he fucked up and is ready to be Superman and like ready to put the team on his back. Like it seems like he's more motivated than or not more motivated. But he seems like he's motivated for that and like isn't coming from like you know look at zion on the other hand who's like you hear him talk and there's like no motivation in his voice you don't feel confident in him at all i do feel like we can rely on jaw to like really produce that aura is getting to you that's what it is definitely got dog to him jaw got dog to him. he has a chip on his shoulder and i like it like it's the fact that i don't know if y'all seen the clip of him like during his first interview since everything happened um Literally, they asked, like, are you hearing those conversations of people saying Reese and Jalen are better than you? And he's like, hey, man, hats off to those guys. So he still got the edge to him. And you can see, like, all right, man, y'all, y'all, y'all really, y'all really yeah, Jalen Brunson, bro. Oh, oh, oh. I got something to show y'all. My only question is, okay, the team is literally in the same point, in the same spot mentally as the Wizards or Pistons. With your team like that, with you coming in there, are you a leader? Is that going to rub off on them? Is it going to make guys play harder? Or are you going to have guys sitting out there looking like them, uh, Looking like Avi did look in the preseason when Jordan Poole got fifty one, he's like, "Hey, bro, swing the ball," because this is not this, <laughs> this isn't this isn't working. Are you gonna have Marcus Smart like, "All right, I'm not feeling it." Is J- is Jaron Jackson gonna get back to his regular self because of Josh's leadership? If the answer is yes, all right, man, Josh's that dude. If it's yeah. it, if it's nothing but just highlight dunks and highlight miss dunks. Hey man, Reese is better. I'm sorry. I'm gonna say I'm a I don't I don't mind Reese being better. I think hey and, man, and Fox is better, at least right now. I don't man, mind. I don't we have that conversation. I don't I don't mind Reese being better. Hell, I don't I really don't mind if my take has to be so wrong and you have to kick him out the four because Fox is better. My whole point is y'all say any half decent point guard is better than John Morant. And Souls was just shocked by it. People are saying Jalen Brunson is better than him right now. Like, all right, bro. Like, B. Souls doesn't watch the Knicks, though. No, yeah, no, no, no. The, the only reason I was surprised, no cap, I just had a brain fart. I thought you said Jay, like, I thought it was referring to Jalen Duren. I'm like, what? What? Jalen Duren? Uh, <laughs> what the fuck? What? Nah, nah, nah. But, but, like, that's what I'm saying. Jalen like, who? Who? Like, I, I just feel, I just feel like this great. I'm not, I'm not standing, bro. Jaylen I really, Rose? I really do not care. But I feel like any all star guard that can average 20, everyone's saying is better than Jaw, as if he isn't a all star guard that can do the exact same thing, but has it's, significantly more talent. It's kind amen. of, amen. Dino's shot is going down. No. Oh my <laughs> <God>. <laughs> a hot depot, man, right. better than anybody. No, and he played defense. <laughs> Sage, can I ask you, is Trey Young better than John Morant? That's always been a debate ever since both of them were good. And no. um, right now, I got Ja. Okay. Wow. Dark okay. Okay. <laughs> cool. Cool. Trey Young. Him last year for sure. I just yeah, he's better than All right, now I got Ja. Right now, I got Ja. The disrespect on Trey Young. Trey Young. Trey Young. Swear, boy. Hey, Dame. Man. Say ja Dame Dame or Ja. Dame so you want to start to be better, but he ain't proven Jamal Murray. Jamal Murray. Nah, okay. nah. Jamal Murray. Okay, let's relax. Ja, no, uh, hey, ja listen, you will be surprised. You'll be surprised how many people are trying to bro, Kyrie or bro. Jamal Murray. Like, like, ticket, I call bro. it the Stop. Kyrie effect, man. No, it is ticket. It really <laughs> is. We need to start ticket. these Trey Young conversations while we're at it. Are y'all thinking no. Jalen Brunson or Trey Young? That's it. You know, Look, you know I'm who I'm thinking. To troll. We, wait, wait, no, wait. Trey Young is oh no back to this question. Can we go back to this question? He asked, I want to change my answer because he asked, like, who's the biggest fraud? And I, I actually do think that it's Trey Young. I oh, think wow. Trey Young has, I think Trey oh. Young has, has fooled a lot of people into making them think that he is like an elite shooter. That I'm he on is, Omar's that, that he's that he's in the conversation with like Dame or Curry. Or that like he's like that level of and stuff. Talent? And he's, and he's just okay, not. Stop you there. He's you, just I not. Think you're you you interpreting those conversations is where it just gets screwed up when everyone's they, talking about like. The level of shooter he is, it's about the range, not like the numbers and how many times it goes. Even though that, that's what's important about shooting, we're just talking about Correct. things that <laughs> what we see, how many people can do this, and he is in the same conversation of how many can do this for on a consistent basis. That's not arguable or debatable whatsoever. What now, in shoot? terms of, I'm sorry, I'm just talking no, about, no, I'm just talking about overall. I'm, I'm reading chat, not you. I'm just talking mm-hmm. about overall shooting. I think that. I, I agree with you. I think that when it comes to like range, there are like a certain amount of people, and Trey Young is one of those people who has the range. When we talk about three point shooting overall, I think a lot of times, and and listen, maybe maybe I'm interpreting it wrong, but what I have seen and what I have heard about Trey Young is that 
you include hey you Ooh. you want to watch nba games with your favorite nba creators let's keep it a buck yeah, we have this thing called playback tv go onto your mobile app and type in playback tv or go on your desktop and type in playback.tv slash lkiab you're talking about jf kennedy era bro i'm not trying to hear that i'm 23 years old because i'm telling you you don't want to miss out on this extra content only on playback.tv everything into the, the three-point shooting and a lot of people associate the range with everything and i think that because of that he has mm -hmm. tricked a lot of people into thinking that he is like a great great three-point shooter when he just isn't he just isn't like a fantastic three-point shooter from everywhere right for for somebody for somebody who shoots as many threes as as he does i don't think that it's that the results have been the same I think you're I just think, having a five-year-old conversation, though. Like, oh wow, not even trying to be no, no, for real though. Like, that's something that was like draft conversations year one, year two, because they saw it in the in the in in Oklahoma and stuff like that, and then they saw some kind of flashy stuff. But like, people have been stopped having that conversation. Who's the other now, count for him though? Right? Like, who's the other name in terms of like legends? I've heard I've heard some like Steve Nash type stuff. Right? If you if you don't if you don't want to like talk about like current players. Like, would you would you agree that Steve Nash has been a name that's been thrown around with Trey Young's name? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah but but, time, yeah. but even 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 in the legend comparison, and mind you, I, I mean, there's terrible comparisons, and I hate the comparison game because people always do just nasty yeah. comparisons yeah. based off of like one thing. So, and that that's why mm -hmm. we're in this situation with Trey Young. He shot two 40 foot jump shots, made both of them. My God, this is Steph Curry. Like, <laughs> but it's not. Like, once you look at the other stuff that Steph Curry does, and you compare it against that. And that doesn't even that doesn't even scratch the surface on efficiency. Like this just not. But I think that that talking point is just so old about Trey Young. And we're at like a new stage of interpreting what he is, uh, what he is in, et cetera, et cetera. To the point now where we're just like ultimately disrespecting Trey Young. And I got folks that are like, oh yeah, he's not even in top 10 point guard. Like, like in those conversations, like they're disrespecting yeah, him to crazy. the utmost yeah, degree. That's, 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 I was a uh... I was joking when I saw him, him versus Jalen Brunson. I still give Trey credit compared to that, compared to Jalen Brunson. But I came into the year more like you, where I was like, "Look at this nigga Donovan." <laughs> I'm just saying, <laughs> I'm just saying, right? I'm just no, it's a conversation. You, but you I, I came into the year like you <laughs> have combos. Like it is actually productive. Jaylen He's Brunson. arguing a productive thing. Jalen Brunson is but no, fantastic. No, because like, I came into the year thinking that uh, I was with you guys. Like he's getting too much hate last year, and I was like, it's just one down year. It's a shooting slump. It'll be fine. It's year two of the shooting slump. At a certain point, you laughed earlier at the one uh, efficient year comment. He literally has one year where he's more than league average efficiency overall. Literally, it's the only season two years ago. And I still think he's good despite being inefficient. But I think when you don't have, bring anything defensively and you're incredibly ball dominant and don't play off ball at all, and you're going to be this like Luka type role, people call it heliocentric, like the ball's in your hands all the time, you're leading the offense. You got to be an elite passer and you got to be efficient if you're going to be a volume shooter. And if he's not going to be a volume shooter, it's hard to justify giving him that much usage when he brings that much down defensively compared to the other guards who aren't total black holes. Is Jalen yeah. Brunson efficient in this offense? Jalen Brunson is more efficient than, in any offense because yeah, he is his, actually his style is just conducive to be good. I ain't gonna lie. I think I think I mean, may, maybe I'm misinterpreting the the stat. It's a little advanced for me, but um, I ain't gonna lie. Like, ain't he hit sixty percent true shooting? Like, damn near three years straight. Try no, he's twenty seven the past two years. Oh well, yeah, he had over seven past two years for sure. Um, he's a free throw merchant, though. He's a free throw merchant. No, he had he had one year where he was over sixty. Yeah, that's yeah. He was at sixty once. Let me pull it back up. Trey Young that just not being a free throw. Yeah, he was at sixty once. He had fifty nine and a half uh, in 2020, 2019, and then he's at fifty nine here. So I'm giving him three seasons. I, I was just confused by one season, but he's definitely at this moment in time less efficient than he was. I mean, it's statistically proven. Um, I just think he gets a little too much shit because we're going to argue like the same way Omar did with uh, Aaron Gordon. It's a bonus in terms of who would you rather have to win? That's fine. But as a talent, I mean, not yeah. too much on Trey, y'all. Not too no, much I on Trey. No, no I, get, I get that, right? If we are in Chris Brickley runs in the summer, give me Trey on my team. Oh, oh, my God. God. But if I want to win a championship, but if I want to win a championship I, don't, like, I don't want Trey Young to be my point guard. It's a style of play thing. Like, we talk a lot about like James Harden in the playoffs and how it's hard to win with that style of play. You can only win with that if it's like a Luka Doncic and they're hitting on everything to the highest degree. You know they're going to be a volume scorer that doesn't struggle with efficiency. You know their passing is going to be there. If Trey's not going to bring that consistently, it's hard to justify that style of play.
Uh, I need let's, to let's, see. Let's, I already know he's getting the signed trade jersey because he, <laughs> he wants to munch on camera. I <laughs> need to see Trey with the non bottom five, on, bottom, bottom 10 defense. That's what I want to see. I want to see, I want to see Trey Young on a defense that isn't literally bottom 10. You no, know, he got it. Ugly no, no, no. Too. You have the ugly jersey too. That's terrible. <laughs> That's a terrible jersey. Uh, that jersey's I'm trash. That. You should keep that in the closet. Please don't bring that outside. <laughs> that, was that was a terrible era of Hawks, of Hawks jerseys. Mm. <laughs> okay, well, if I start talking about the Knicks, I just I don't know. I will be a bad <laughs> guy. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Hey, I hate what you like this. Just give Trey a top 15 defense. That's all I want to see. I, I literally am because he's on it. It's impossible. No, 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 no. No, but that's what I'm saying. That's why I said 15. I, I ain't gonna lie. There's no <laughs> you get the best defenders around one through I mean two through four. I mean two through five. He's he's anchoring a day. Cool. But uh, <laughs> give me give me top 15. I just want to see what happens. We saw that the Dame had a far run there. We've seen uh I cannot think of the other guy, but this is why a lot of people don't think Indiana's going far because Indiana they yeah. can't guard nobody. I, I just want to see a competent defense around Trey before I finally rule him out. Yeah, yeah I think I, we're at the point eight, where bro. let me tell, let me tell. <laughs> <laughs> that was crazy. You scared me. I'm like, is he here? <laughs> I'm gonna take year eight. Hey, I'm free. I'm old. <laughs> but more. I think we're at the point to where like we're just realizing we have to accept who Trey is at this point. That 2020 run run or whatever had everyone thinking like, yeah, he's probably going to be top three uh, consistently every single year throughout the rest of his career. But with his his efficiency has been a real thing ever since he was in college. And there's only so much you can get away with, especially at the size that he is at. People say he's like six foot six one. I feel like this goddamn like he's probably five eleven. You know what I'm saying? So um, there's only so much you can get away with that play style while also being in a dysfunctional organization that just makes your defense look ten times worse than what it should be. You know, the, we've seen players like James Harden in the past, and in my opinion, that's his NBA, his real comparison. Uh, they do things slightly different. Of course, he's a little bit, a lot of bit smaller, but. Um, in terms of just like having the ball in your hands, heliocentric offense, and he has this special thing to where I only saw Harden, or I only saw he's the only player who I've ever seen replicate this is like tricking the defense and making them think you're taking a floater. Meaning, meanwhile, you're really dumping it off in the in the in the in the air, so you can have Clint Capella or X Center catch that. He is special when it comes to that, and that's why he's his, he's the Harden comparison. But he's just worse on all levels. Plus, he's smaller, so it's like, you got to accept Damn. it. <laughs> I think talent is great, but if there's no impact to match it for years in a row, it really doesn't matter. That's true. That's true. Y'all are okay. <laughs> last last question that the I got. The person is Harden, but he's worse in everything. Yeah, I'm about to say, he's like <laughs> <laughs> last question that I got. Um, it's trade season. The rumors are flying. Um, the player that I want to see off their team is Blank, and then if you want to throw in some some teams, I'm gonna go. Let me say this first: OG Ananobi. I'm I'm tired of him being yeah. in Toronto. <laughs> um, I keep That's hearing about how good this guy is. I need to see what it is. And the nastiest trade rumor that I just saw was him being in Chicago. I'm like, oh man, similar situation all over again. <laughs> but no, nah, I see him somewhere where he can compete. Um, I don't have that team, but I just want to see him somewhere where he can actually 100%. compete yeah. for games that matter. Peyton Pritchard. Is my answer. Oh, we my gotta God. give it up. We gotta give it up. I don't why? know why he got an extension. You can't. You, you know gotta... why. You know why. Oh, oh brother. I'm just he's saying. A, he's a white bench player in Boston. They love him. <laughs> I'm saying, why? We That's got this why. guy JD Davison in the in the G League right now. I would personally give him more minutes than Peyton Pritchard. Bro, the, the only reason he is in the game is to score, and he's shooting like less than forty percent from the field, averaging six points a game. He can't pass and he can't defend, bro. Get JD Davison on there, man. God. Can you think of somebody that's not on your team? Be so please. Because I did. Pain no, Pritchard is not helping the shorts. We got Sam Howard. We got Sam Howard. Uh, Pascal Siakam can never have thing on the theme of the is Pascal Siakam. They need to free him. They're currently deciding to build around Scotty, which is cool. But I feel like they're doing it to a degree that hurts Siakam. And now he's not even in conversations of like anywhere close to an All Star spot. And a couple of years ago, we were like, oh, he's one of the best power forwards in the league. I feel like he desperately needs a new home on a team that actually wants him. Beginning of the season during media day, uh, all the people around the organization were like, we played real selfish last year. And it was like, wink, wink, 
Pascal. Like it just seemed like they were completely throwing him under the bus. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, uh, I brought up Donovan Mitchell in terms of um, who might be on the block, but someone who I think right now is on the block and definitely should be free from a franchise that's trolling is Brandon Ingram. All that Zion shit going Ooh. on. Hey, Brandon Ingram is doing everything right except hitting threes. And I promise you, he's not going <laughs> to stay at 30% for the entire season. Free Brandon Ingram from New Orleans. Put him on a team where I, I think we all agree he's probably a championship uh, roster player right now. Put him on a team that can compete. You're going to be you're going to get a haul back for him in return. I think it's the best of both worlds situation. You only need to pull the sugar because right now you're only letting the CJ stock decline even worse. You're letting the Zion stock decline. At least the BI stock is hot. Have them, ugh, pack them up. So and they got a free trade Murphy, 100%. Yeah. Yeah, and someone Trey. Who's, yeah, and, and Trey. Someone who's not on the trade block right now but should be is DeJounte Murray. Uh, we have no <laughs> assets, <laughs> and we're ass, and he's one of the most valuable players in the league right now because he's an actual all-star, all-star level player with a super team-friendly contract. Making 18 mil a year, that's outrageous. I, I can name you so many players who are making 30, 25 mil who he's better than. And so I think a lot of teams would, I think Atlanta could get a lot of value back for him. So we need, we need picks. Austin. Assets. He'll be nice in Boston. <laughs> oh my God. Boston he'd be great. Every... <laughs> he'd be great. Oh my God. Real great, real great, real Peyton Pritchard, Jordan like Wallace, and like two picks. Hey, get oh my God. Jordan <laughs> Wallace. Jordan Wallace. Like a Laker fan. Oh my Damn. God. All right. All right. THT in 2027. Crazy. Man, let's get Lowry Martin into OKC. Oh yeah. my! I, I, yeah, okay, OKC is super team. said OKC. I thought okay. you were trolling. T said OKC. That's OKC is, is is the team that I want to see make a move. I want to see OG go to OKC for like the same reasons why I think OG can help OKC a lot. Um, and also, I'm just tired of hearing about OG trade rumors. Like, can we just trade? It's him and Miles Turner. Where I'm just like, can y'all just yeah. get traded? Yeah, we can stop talking about this because it just happens too much. So. Yeah. Last year, last year, that was John Collins for me. And well, he's back just, on the block now. Yeah, now he's back on the block now because he's disgruntled and all this stuff. But John Bro, Collins. Go to Europe. Like go to Europe. <laughs> drop listen, drop 45 a night. Like he could hoop over there. But I think I, I think I think his situation definitely was like a oh damn, the craft is not much greener on the other side. I don't want to be here. <laughs> Let me go back to Atlanta type shit, but it is what it is. What are you gonna say that one? <laughs> Um, I was going to say a guy for me personally, uh, Jaden Ivey. I don't see why they drafted him in the Damn. first place in Detroit. Free. And now seeing Monty Williams is just bringing him off the bench randomly without even addressing anything with him. He's not in their long-term plans. I don't think he's in their long-term plans. He needs to go. That team's tanking. And you 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 missed the pick right there, basically. You could have got a Keegan Murray in there. You could have got someone else to fit around K Cunningham versus Jaden Ivey, who I just thought his game would be – like a scoop going to um, Charlotte type of thing. He, this he doesn't compliment your guard that you have now. There's no need to get him. That's a guy, and oh man, I'm not gonna lie. I, I don't know if this is a super reactionary take. I got a lot of heat for it. Hey man, we going back to New Orleans, but it's not bi. They need to trade Zion. It's <laughs> done. The, not mad it's at done. It. It's done. The, the experiment is over. What to me personally, what you drafted him to be to be when he was supposed to be. He's just not that. He's closer to his floor than his ceiling. Bezos, uh, that was a Bezos quote that I, I'm not gonna lie, I'm, I'm taking that and run with it because I, I firmly believe that he is closer to his floor than his ceiling. And the man won't stay healthy again. Soda cans in the bathroom. I'm out. <laughs> Get him. Send him anywhere else. I don't want that in my organization. I take you want to be the GM? Can, whatever. But do you want to be the GM that sees him hit that ceiling somewhere else and everyone looks at you like, why didn't you just wait? I ain't going to lie. I ain't going to lie. Yeah, we not. talked about that. Yes, I do. You know what I'm talking about? Like, seriously. Because yeah. he you, wasn't going to guy. do that in New Orleans. I'm sorry to talk over yeah. Donald here because it was his take, but the food too good. He was not going to <laughs> ever be that in Smoothie King. He just wasn't going to do it. What's the yeah, worst food city in the country? Where do we got to send him? Oh shit! Oh, oh what's this? No, no, that's Utah. that's gonna, that's going to be Utah. a problem. Oh my god, yeah, Utah. that's going to be a problem because if the general food there is bad, he's eating nothing but fast food. Like that, <laughs> oh, shit. you he have to you have to get him into like a into like a top fifteen food city, right? Nothing too good, but <laughs> nothing too bad to where he's on DoorDash every day. Well, not, I was even, say, not not you to gotta not have to, a sweet green, you know. Uh, not to be like, LA, get ten degrees. I was just about to say that not to be like a Lakers guy, but like. 
yo, you need to go where the culture is like, yo, health nut, health fitness. Like you can just pop in and get a vegan like bite or whatever the case may be. <laughs> send them to because Indiana. I, like, like Donovan said, no, you send him to Indiana. He's at Dairy Queen every day. Every day. Every day. <laughs> ain't, no par- ain't no party, so he's just he's, sitting he's on his ass eating. Scarfing two dilly bars. Like, nah, and, he's going fucking. You mess, around, <laughs> you mess around, send him to a city. That's you mess crazy. around, send him to a city you don't know nothing about. Like, Indiana, you send him to Indiana, you wouldn't know. Indiana, them niggas love their barbecue. Zion's right. fuck. You didn't even know that. I didn't know that until I moved to Indiana. I go there, these niggas love barbecue. Sacramento, like, okay, Sacramento wow. sounds like the thing. You can't go anywhere in the South. The food is too, it's too yeah. just gluttonous in the South. Right. You gotta go, you gotta go somewhere up north. I think Sacramento would be a, a pretty good like like spot as well. It's always right? raining. He's it's gonna get bad food, customers. Hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say we gotta send him to Miami, but he might retire. Oh, no. He might just oh, hate yeah, his yeah, life. Yeah, yeah. Oh hell no! He gonna look too at many, too many Mills. Yeah, like, too many Mariah, Mariah Mills. Mariah. Yeah. 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 That, I was gonna say if you send him somewhere like Miami or somewhere with a hard nosed culture, somewhere where the players are holding each other accountable, they got vets. That might be even good for him. He could go somewhere in the South with bad customer service and gluttonous food. That's fine. <laughs> but if you got vets down there to keep him in line, I'm. I, if he was on Miami last year, Udonis Haslam is knocking at his door at three in the morning. Hey, my man, counter to that. Where's the soda? Let's get it out of here. No soda. My counter, my counter to gonna... that. If they couldn't get, if listen, they couldn't get your boy Thickums to to slim down. Zion has no chance. That's a good. Wait, wait, no, wait, 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 wait. What are we doing? Hold on, hold on, Not as skinny on. as he needed to be. Wait, they, wait, they wait. have a program. <laughs> I counter with this. I counter with this. Though. I counter with okay, this. Okay, what's up? What's up? Look at his. If you look at his vets in New Orleans, I don't trust those vets. That's Case fair. being That's fair. Garrett Temple, Garrett, yeah, no motion. Garrett Temple, no motion. Brandon Ingram, no CJ McCollum. <laughs> hey, Garrett Temple's one of those guys. He's a part of the players' union about that new CBA. You think I trust any player that was a part of that? What? <laughs> the, the, the amount of BS they allowed the league to get over their heads, and he was just in there with glasses. Yeah, I agree. No, that's not <laughs> <laughs> He's letting Zion keep soda cans that's in the bathroom. Fair. And CJ, just look the way. CJ McCullum wants to be a podcaster so bad. Like, no, he, he, he does not want to hoop no more. He's like Blake Griffin at the end of his career. Like, I just want to do stand up so bad. Blake Griffin, was, <laughs> Blake Griffin was so jealous of Matt Rife. He was like, ah, I could be this guy. No, this is me. This is me for real. That's crazy. <laughs> uh, my, my, my two, though, my last two. I ain't gonna lie, they're veterans. It'll never happen. I just want to see them on different teams. Steph and Russ. Oh my! I think God. no, it's Steph. a bad. It's a bad look. Russ? Russ coming out. Yeah, it's a bad look. Russ coming out saying, "Man, I'll just get on the bench. You know, whatever it takes, man. I just, I just want to make James happy, and I just want to make PG happy. <laughs> I just want to make Kawhi happy. You don't have to do that, Russ. You don't got to do all that, man. What do you mean, man? The LA Vintage are real, man. Yeah, they put that babies, together. Russ. Nothing but guys from LA playing for their hometown team. That's not the Lakers. And you don't not get him out. No, that's the purpose. Of he don't. He don't got to cry to those man, guys. Man. He don't have to cry to Harden. Name, yeah. Send him back to the real. Can you name me Harden to be on that bench right now? It's, I don't know what. Can they you name doing. me a single team? Can you name me a single team where Russ would be the starting point guard and they'd want him? Oh shit! You don't got to start. Portland, like the Pistons, Port, like sure, Portland? the Pistons they didn't get anybody. Yeah. Why, why would they? Why would Portland want a I don't know. Guard, you know. I don't know. I look. This, <laughs> I don't have the answers. I would even ask Charlie. They need some correction. They need some Charlotte Russ and Lamelo. Yeah. Oh my oh, no. Put it Russ Lamelo and Brandon Miller, who thinks Paul it's George is the goat. On oh, the court shit. it's about Ooh. off the court shit. Settling I everything. Say, no cap. No cap. Chicago. I would say Chicago. Even though Cowboys playing well. Even though Cowboys playing well. Chicago. Miami does they could use a point guard not gonna lie Phoenix as ironic as it is they actually do need a point guard I'm sorry yeah, he needs they to be reunited with somebody not, not that they point have, guard they got Bradley Bill 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 they got Bradley that's the guy they didn't need over there I don't know why Bradley Bill that Yo, was crazy why is Bradley Bill there whatever I will say a uh, 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 rent no Oh. Oh, low key San Antonio. Yeah, actually, San Antonio, San Antonio. no, no, no. I'd rather take any shooting spacing issue than to just have an actual point. I am watching a Spurs game right now. <laughs> and they and just, all of his buckets have been self created, dog. No, they, can't, <laughs> they can't get a seven foot nine guy the basketball, which sounds like the craziest thing. They're doing it on purpose. 
They're trying uh, to be <laughs> they, they, That's what happens when that Jeremy is literally the Edward. only counter that they're trolling. And because I believe they got Trey, they got Trey Jones. They're 100 percent doing it on purpose. Yeah. I, I do yeah. believe they don't have 2020 20, 20 vision. They got 2024 20, NBA draft vision. They want the number one overall <laughs> pick again. Fuck, fuck all logic. They're fine. They they're trying to drive people crazy on purpose. I fully believe. What about the Orlando Magic? Do y'all think the Magic can use the Russell Westbrook? Hell no. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. Yeah, yeah. Just let let the let the magic be the ma- magic. I want to see them make zero moves. Hey, yeah, let the, let yeah. that bitch sail out. Let that bitch my, sail my out. Last... Markel Fultz. They already got Russell Westbrook. They're fine. Yeah. Uh, my oh, last one. Crazy. My last one was Steph. <laughs> I just I, I promise you for a legend. I just can't. They're, they're yeah, playing Brian, I'm glad right? you prefaced that it won't happen. But yeah, they're, oh they're, just, they're just playing with yes. career. You know, oh, you know. Please. I think I think Steph could have had. Honestly, I think Steph could have had like seven. I ain't gonna lie. And what? Yes, I, over his career, like there's a couple that you know they lost. Katie still or have Dray, I think Draymond alone cost, costed him at least just one. I ain't gonna lie. Like, yeah, it's just no too many that Draymond I left out on the table. Oh, and now God. they're over here playing with the goof troop. <laughs> they got Clay Thompson. <laughs> they, got, they got Draymond <laughs> punching God, people. Zico's in, you know. <laughs> yeah, they got the knockoff. <laughs> they, have, they have no name brand Nico Mannion on the team. God, he's, he's, you know, I just... If they just if they just play a little bit better, yo, Omar has watched like five brothers. Warriors games, and he's seen the same dude every single time, and he's like, "Who is this wannabe Nico Mannion on the court?" <laughs> he's bad. I, I don't know. He's cloning Nico, Nico Mannion is crazy. <laughs> That's the bar we're trying can't to be, achieve. Yeah. <laughs> We, we want another be, one. We can be better than Nico Mannion, but that's not the point. I just don't want to see Steph around these. Honestly, these like he's still nah. great. Like, Steph is great. Like he's great. Steph is still top five. It's just ridiculous. They need to move Draymond first and foremost. I want to send his ass to somewhere like Indiana. That would be really nice. Tyrese <laughs> and Dre. Look, Tyrese and Dre. That, that, they that, that, they, they made it an enforcer. They made it clear as day that they they ain't fucking. <laughs> they just got James Johnson. Nobody. They just yeah. got James Johnson. That's their enforcer, which was hilarious. I, I'm, I actually, I think I believe in the Patriots more that they like saw Giannis being like wild, and they were like, "Nah, we got, we got to get somebody who can fight in here." And that they made that move. Like they, they actually, they actually started taking shirt off Tyrese. in the back and was like, "Nah, we need a real, yeah, we need nah, a real tough guy here." Like if Giannis <laughs> actually had swung, yeah, we would have been, we would have trouble. The <laughs> reason why we're here is because of you. If he didn't drop sixty, none of this would have happened. So. Yeah. <laughs> But the the other thing is like the 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 Warriors are just so directionless right now. Like I really just I don't think even Warriors fans. I be I listen to the Warriors spaces after the playback games. They'd be depressed. Literally, they're lost. Yeah, they're they're confused. Fan base is confused. Outside lookers are confused. Steve Kerr, he's just saying whatever at this point. I think Dre deserves it. You know, you know he deserves it. <laughs> He's just, Warriors you know, fans I, are fighting each other over over whose fault it is. It's the funniest thing. Bro, <laughs> bro that's the funniest community up. in the world. Yeah, where they fucked up. And what no one really wants to talk about seriously is their drafting department is fucking horrendous. Yeah. The last two yeah, good draft picks that they had outside of Jordan Poole is fucking who? Kevon Looney? I was like, 2015? Who? After that, it's Harrison Barnes. We're back in that era. Yeah. They miss on a consistent basis. In the 2020 draft, they took James Wiseman for whatever reason. And in 2021, they had two lottery picks. They gave you guys two yeah. chances to pick someone who can hoop and do something productive for your franchise. You know what I'm saying? It's not about like them picking the right person who could who fits necessarily well. If you have the straight of talent, someone's gonna want that. No one's giving you guys a haul for Kaminga and Poole so you can continue the evolution of your franchise. That's where they really fucked up, really, and no one's really talking about that. And they also don't play Moses Moody or Kaminga enough to know if somebody's gonna give them a haul for him because Steve Kerr just wants to glue his hands to his veterans and <laughs> refuse to play the young guys. It might be ass in practice too. Like that's another thing. It could just be truly just thinking. You know? <laughs> and every day he's like, oh, "I'd just rather run some GP two minutes. Bring <laughs> bring GP two back. Bring him back. Bring him back." Nah, right, when he know. signed GP two back, that's when I knew that the I, I'm gonna keep pushing this every time we talk Warriors that they are the next next gen Laker fans. Uh, I said, "Oh, that's some shit we do." Oh yeah, hey, hey, let's bring it back, Andrew Bynum. You know, let's let Gasol. Yeah. Can you still play? Like, like, why not? You still got Kobe on your team. So go ahead and try. <laughs> like, no, bro. Give nah. give it up, bro. I ain't gonna go. If they wanna <laughs> if they wanna be the Lakers, they're gonna make Andre Godawa their GM next year. If they're really oh. gonna go all in. <laughs> oh, why not? God. They got Mike oh. ain't, ain't Mike Dunley their GM? Fuck it, why not oh, yeah. at this point? <laughs> yeah, <he's laughs> <fine. laughs> Oh, literally, I, Dre, David you, Lee you, Max. Yeah, you oh, tired of doing podcasts? Like, come on, man, just let's let's make shit happen. I don't know. <laughs> run basketball <laughs> operations. Yeah, run basketball operations. Maybe yeah. you had a bad back, dude, and they said bring him back. Like, come on, what are we doing here? 
I'd be pissed if I was them. But anyway, that's all I got. That's all I got, man. That's all I got too, man. This was a great episode. This is a great episode. Yeah, it's fun having y'all on, man. For real, for real. Appreciate y'all for inviting us, man. This is great. Yeah. The non-basketball stuff was great. Nice mix up for the content. I love yeah, the, I love um, the Atlanta the Atlanta analysis. <laughs> <laughs> no, we like the not I like even being the like it wasn't even like an option. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, that shit, I'm telling y'all, Why when are we, we talking about this? in this event, man, that's the, best the fact part. that y'all know diff Atlanta will be on Monday's <laughs> podcast. Man. Y'all know diff Atlanta was so beautiful for many reasons. <laughs> the best yeah, part, hey, babe, said, babe, can we have another talk part. again? <laughs> <laughs> The, that's like the perfect encapsulation of Donovan because we've never talked about Atlanta. I don't even sure he actually has strong opinions. He argues for the love of the game. We'll argue about anything. <laughs> it doesn't matter. The social economic, you know, the pain difference. Yeah, the pain difference is great. We can talk about it. We can talk about it. Like, yo, I've never thought about that. <laughs> well, we can, we can talk, we can talk about it well. afterwards because that's because, like, I'm not going to lie. We were like an hour past that and I was like, I actually have more stuff to say. Like, oh, <laughs> this is crazy. You know what else I hate, Atlanta? You know what? No, but but it wasn't even on like some hater stuff. Like, I just really wanted to continue having that conversation. So listen, I don't we, like Waterboy. We can talk, we can talk offline. Waterboy, <laughs> Waterboy. <laughs> we need to we need to get him in the. He's still going, and we've never talked about Atlanta. He's still going. <laughs> <laughs> It was never an option for them. <laughs> we can we can get them in the Discord. We'll get them in the Discord and we'll have a Bet. we'll have a conversation. Yeah, but um, listen, the deep three guys, the deep three pod, ladies and gentlemen, Woo! round of applause. Hell yeah! <laughs> Soundboard is so loud. <laughs> it's loud. <laughs> Wait, Someone said, not, what a great pod you... that I'll never get uploaded. <laughs> Hey, chill, before, man, we before we get out, can y'all play the, the little Maybach music laugh that y'all have on the soundboard? <laughs> I love that. <laughs> <laughs> that laugh is awesome. Man, that one day, man, but that nigga played that laugh like 30 straight times. <laughs> <laughs> the comments, that, was, hey, that was one of the hardest laughs I had. Our YouTube audience hates the soundboard. Yeah, hey, Twitch man. loves it, though. Twitch loves it. Oh, YouTube loves like, it, yo, man. shut the fuck up, bro. <laughs> it's always that one comment. Jump straight to 1203 to avoid the soundboard. Jump straight to 1203. <laughs> the pod actually starts there. Right. And nobody That's listens hilarious. to them. Um, but listen, <laughs> they're on. They're live Monday at six thirty. No, uh, eight, eight, eight o'clock Eastern. Or eight o'clock. Eight o'clock Eastern. Eastern. Eight o'clock Eastern. <laughs> They'll have to compete with us, but no, live eight o'clock <laughs> Eastern on Mondays and Wednesdays. Is it just Mondays? Just Mondays, and then the just Monday. I slurred that together, and then Friday the full episodes come out for the regular pod. Dang, we got the method. Yeah, we definitely need to tap in. Um, but yeah, that's gonna do it for us here. Um, peace out, guys. Peace out, everybody. Peace.